Are you listening?
Yes. After three songs, I'm finally here. I didn't have time to... I'm sorry. I woke up. I just woke up. <sighs> Had a long day today. How, oh, ow. How's everybody doing? Are we doing good? Are we behaving ourselves? Oh, wait. Y'all are still... Okay, there we go. I forgot how much of a delay there is. Well, let's go through the list. I see Rainbow Bright, King Quinn, Melia, May May, Rarmel's, Lorna, the Amber Chick, and my baby Skip. And I'm seeing it. Oh, let me hit live chat just in case I miss somebody. The drama parodies in here. Okay, leave my big bottle of Diet Coke alone. I did not. What's up, Fruity Ann? I did not have time to get a glass. So, I'm, I'm two liter in it tonight. Leave me alone. I'm being super diabetic tonight. I'm always... Oh, speaking of behaving ourselves, Skip, did you, did, did you see my tweet? I think you, I think you did because you liked it. Talking about behaving ourselves. Just saying. Where's my charger at? I need to put my phone on charger. I can't believe Skip put on an angel face. That's a damn lie. <laughs> Angelo took too many red bill. Oh, Lord. He's like, he comes in here. What are we doing? Okay, well, first off, what we're doing is we are going to... Excuse me. Sorry. Diet Coke. We are going to, um, um, I'm going to get the word. I'm going to get the word. Uh, react. React to, uh, Mr. D'Angelo Wallace's Influencer 19. That's what we're doing tonight. No, I didn't do it. No, I didn't do No, May May. I did not do any messy tweets. Listen, you're babysitting. You don't have to babysit me no more. Skip is back, okay? You you babysat me while she was gone, and you don't need to be getting the ruler out on me now. You just don't know, Skip. While you were gone, May May was in my DMs going, ah! She was fussing at me the whole time. I love Deanna Drew Wallace. And I'm saying, and, and granted, we're at the beginning of 2021. There are two, well, no. I would say three amazing videos that's come out so far. Okay. And to me, they are the top three videos of 2021 based off of three different categories. And I can't believe I'm about to say this name, but it's true. John Swan's video, latest video on um, Chris Hansen, the editing was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. Black Wolf Company came out with a video about Jeffree Star and how he likes to pay people off and stuff. Really good and researched well. Very good. And D'Angelo Wallace, he kicked ass and took names with this last video. His video was punching people in the face and daring them to swing back. I know you are taking notes on my... um on my behavior. You always take notes on my behavior. I had to deal with a lot of shit while Skip was gone. You were taking notes on my behavior. My monotone king. Wait, what? Oh, to my D'Angelo. I love D'Angelo Wallace. And let's talk about how that man can dress. He is always on point when he is dressed. I'm like, dude, you've got some good style. Excuse me, sir. You are looking amazing. But yeah, those are like the three best videos come out so far. I'm thinking about um, doing Black Wolf Companies on Jeffree Star also. Because, especially with them not being a drama T channel. I mean, it was it, it was really well done. I, I like Black Wolf Company uh, videos. You need to watch the ContraPoints video about J.K. Rowling. That would be top three. D'Angelo Don Swan. Okay, well, you know what? I remember you saying something about that, Angelo. I will do that. 
I've been meaning, okay, matter of fact, when I get off here tonight, I will put that in my watch later. Is it one that I actually need to watch or can I listen to it? Or should I wait till my day off? Hey, what's up, Sinead? I watch him on Twitch now. Love his streams over there. Oh, I bet you his streams are there over there so good. I just don't have the time to watch them. B BWC did a great job. I'm surprised it didn't have more. Yeah, I know. I kind of want to promote the damn thing because it was a good video. And I guess because they're not part of the T community. Mm, excuse me. Um, People just haven't paid much attention to it. You know, but it's a really, 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 really good video. Zali, your thumbnail. Hey, I did that all by myself. I have learned how to cut people out of pictures, as you can tell. I, I wanted, there was about 20 pictures I was going to use, and it was going to be a thumbnail full of nothing but D'Angelo's with the Influencer 19, but I was like, ah, that might be a little bit too much, so I'll just stick with five. Okay, I'm going to have to watch that ContraPoints one. I'm definitely going to have to watch that ContraPoints one. Yeah. Okay. I'll definitely watch it. Because I, I, I've, I've had people tell me about ContraPoints, but I've never actually watched ContraPoints. So. I think people have Jeffree Star burnout too. I barely want... Yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, it's been years of hell with him. Especially in the last, what, year and a half? Going on two years? Maybe? I, I'm, cl I'm cloudy when it comes to that. Do you think we'll get a Nerd City video? I hope so. I am a Nerd City stan. I love that man. He has a beautiful girlfriend. Beautiful girlfriend. I think she is absolutely gorgeous. Nerd City. I love me some Nerd City. I love me some Nerd City. But the real question is, are we going to get a clown video? Because technically, it's supposed to be, um, oh my god, what's Clown's, what's Clown's name, May May? What's Clown's name? I just call him Clown. And now that I'm, like, in front of the mic, I can't remember his name. Um, but Clown and Nerd City are supposed to actually do a video together. They've been supposedly working on it for, like, a year. Oh my god, what's Clown's name? He has like, Colossal's crazy. Oh god, his voice. His vo You know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. He can do a video and he doesn't have to do any editing. It could be a black screen. All I want to do is listen to it. I'm not gonna lie. All I want to do is listen. I don't even want to see what he's putting up there. I just want to just listen. He can put a black screen, and it can be a two-hour long video with just a black screen and Colossal's crazy as talking, because that's all I need. I'm just saying. Oh, Colossal's crazy. That voice, though. Let me tell you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. I was starting to be like uh, Angelo. I need to stop myself. I'm not trying to be a hussy like Angelo is on Twitter. So, hold on. <clears throat> All right. Colossal over corpse husband. Okay, wait a minute now. Wait, wait, wait. That is two different genres of voices, okay? You cannot compare. Colossal's crazy's voice to corpse husband's voice, okay? Each voice has its own purpose, all right? We're not taken away from one for the other. Each of their voices have a, have a different purpose, all right? You just let me worry about them purposes. I'm just saying. <laughs> Alleged and rude. Well, it's the truth. You know you a damn huzzy on Twitter. Don't make me show it because I can just, you better start deleting right now because all I got to do is go to scene two, go to Twitter, and find your ass and show them what I'm talking about. I'm just saying. D'Angelo agreed. Okay, look. 
I can't. Just because he agreed with H three H three about that's fine. I still disagree. I do not believe he stole it. I think they just had a similar idea. And maybe he, you know what, he could have even looked at that sweatshirt and go, you know, I like those colors together, but I want that middle more purple than blue and, or more blue than purple, whatever, because it's a different range. And go, but I want the superior pocket. I don't want the old person pocket. Because have you ever noticed when they're comparing the two, they never show the pocket, the bottom pocket of James Charles. Why? Because he had the superior pocket. What's up, Madam Scuttlebutt? <clears throat> oh, okay. So let me talk about next week. All right. And what's going on. All right. So um, I have to play revenge on some people at work. I walked into work today and I had no work because they took all my work last night. They had a dozen cars out there and they were doing my work. And I pretty much had a day of stomping around and. Yeah, you know, yelling a little bit. I yelled a little bit. A little bit. And um, so what I'm going to have to do to make up money, because I only made four hours today. Ten hour day, only made four. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to work late. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang out with my homeboys and work late uh, Tuesday and Thursday night, because that's when they stay late. And that way they can do the cars and I'll just pinstripe them or whatever. So I'm not going to be getting off work till like 9, 9.30. Well, I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays. So what I'm going to do is next week, I'm going to stream Wednesday and Friday. Now, Super Bowl is Sunday. So what I'm thinking is we're going to skip BX Beast Boy for one week. And I may stream on Monday. So next week, it's looking like Monday Wednesday and Friday. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, allegedly Angelo, for telling us all why you have to be RB. Lord have mercy. What are we gonna do with these people? But just to let you know, next week is gonna be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm skipping Sunday with the Super Bowl. We're going to skip BX Beast Boy until the following Sunday because I like doing his early because this one may actually take longer than my last ones. So, yeah, I'd rather start it at 6 o'clock. So, uh, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, next week. Well, it might be screw the Super Bowl, but, like, my views were down on Sunday and that was like a really, really important story. That's why I have it mained on my channel so uh, people can hear it. So, plus my husband may want to watch it. I don't know. Knowing his sister, he'll probably she'll probably want us over there or something. Oh, a week off of Mister BX. I'll rant. On. Yeah, might as well rant. I don't know, I heard his live stream today where he was talking about how um, creators go on other creators and how they don't they don't have proof and they just go off what they hear. And I'm thinking to myself, I had receipts in both my streams about you so far. I'm just saying. I, and I'm sitting here and I want to type it in the chat so bad going, um, I don't know what you're talking about, but I had receipts on you. But I didn't. All I did was a LOL. I just did a cute little LOL. So, that was nice. It's not very respectful to go on somebody's stream and troll, so. I was the bigger person. Yeah, no, you're right. You're exactly, exactly right, Grandma Parody. You are exactly right. <coughs> All right, so is that everything I wanted to discuss with y'all? I went on a tangent. Told you about the new schedule next week. And it's just for next week. The following week, I'm getting back on schedule. They ain't going to have me working late all the time. I, do, I never work late. 
But I'm because what it is is when I work till nine, I'll get an extra hundred and fifty dollars plus hours that I turn. So I'll make an extra three hundred to make up for the only four hours I made today. Would you and him stream a debate where you call him out or not? Would I? Yeah, I would. I would talk to him. I wouldn't have a problem talking to him. He ain't going to do that, though. He's going to run up on other, um, he'll run up on other, uh, streamers and, you know, intimidate them. I mean, he, he's not going to intimidate me. That's why I don't think he'll ever do it. Yeah, I don't think he he would I don't think he would debate me. Let me make sure I don't have cuz I was looking at my banking account. Okay, no, I don't. All right. So I'll make sure. Invite Keem again. We, we ain't doing that shit again. And it won't me that invited him in the first place. I'm just saying. I would of course I would get, Listen, if I dealt with Keemstar without throwing anything now I might light a cigarette. But, I mean, I went through Keemstar without throwing anything. I'm sure I can go through Beast Boy without throwing anything. But he's not going to pay me any mind because, I mean, I don't even have 400 followers. He he doesn't care about me. He thinks I'm like this. I'm not worth it. I'm not even worth it to him. I know how he thinks. But that's all right because the day that he does mess up, and gets caught, and everybody gets pissed off, guess where my videos are going to be? Right on my channel, under a play list, play, playlist called BX Beast Boy Stories. So no, I ain't going to throw none. I would be calm, and as long as he's calm with me, I'd be calm with him. And I would laugh at his gaslighting techniques, because that's what that's what he likes to do. He loves gaslighting techniques. Okay, it is working better without the moving stuff and only the frame moving. Okay, we got this. We got this, notebook crew. All right. All right, live chat is on. Bam. All right, so let's begin. Be nice. I considered making this a chill video where I just vaguely talk about the situation. Can I talk about his turtleneck, his turtleneck and his jacket? He is just, for a young man, he has got some old man style and I love it. Oh, we know, madam. You'll battle anybody. Oh, we know. We know. And some influencers are throwing parties and that's bad because we're kind of in the middle of a pandemic so uh maybe stop <laughs> you guys like i don't want to name names but you know if you could just not endanger people that would be great then it dawned on me why am i being so polite to people who can't even find enough compassion within themselves to not endanger the lives of everyone around them i don't see a reason amen baby amen and you just keep taking just Oh, I love this video. He really is classy. Yes, he is. Madam Scuttlebutt up in here acting up. That's all right. That's why we love her. So, that being said, I have a lot of names to name. With funeral homes here in LA unable to accept more bodies, California's governor has ordered 88 refrigeration trucks to serve as makeshift morgues. We will be cremating her. Normally we probably would uh, have done a burial, but yeah, that would take maybe to the end of June. So from that point up until he passed, uh, <clears throat> I couldn't see him. He just makes good videos. He may, and, and his videos are so good that whether you're even just listening to it or you're watching it, it's still good. It's a good video, not only to see, but to listen also.
So, um, since this is kind of a heavy video, let me get the fun stuff out of the way first. I'm back. Now, honestly, I haven't really been gone. Like, I've I've been uploading. I put up 13 videos this month so far. And they're all over on my other channel, which is also called D'Angelo Walls for some reason. They go up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. New videos three times a week. Actually, I put up like 24 videos last month, if you count my VODs channel. Because, yeah, I have a VODs channel. Yeah, he made me cry, too. Yes, he made me cry, too now where i post my past live streams i am actually a twitch partner i stream commentary and variety content three times a week on tuesday thursday saturday so yes i have new content going out at 2 p.m central time monday all right let's go here celebrities have always been just kind of bad at remembering that they're like normal people but during quarantine on a scale of one to ten i would put them at like a solid 19 for tone deafness from sam smith posting a quarantine meltdown from their uh 13 million dollar mansion to sia posting virus but the virus is crossed out so it just says us and it's like if i had a choice between knowing english and never having to read what you just said ever again dos vidan yeah all celebrities are bad at this it's like 13 12 at this point i mean have you forgotten that imagine cover there's no heaven Celebrities are out here trying to give me hope for COVID-19, but they all have such a tremendous lack of taste. I'm honestly more worried about them giving me COVID-19 itself. But instead of silly things like that, I kind of want to look at more extreme examples of celebrities' mishaps during COVID because I feel like they represent kind of an interesting plot twist regarding our relationship with these celebrities. And who better to start with than the... <laughs> Oh, it's Sloan in here? Oh, hey, Sloan, what's going on? This video, sorry I'm late. Oh, Amanda Pants, you're fine. Believe me, you y'all were doing something. That's why I just said, have a good night. You know, just slipped out. How you doing, Sloan? I, I love me some D'Angelo. I can't help it. The perfect modern day influencer. Kim Kardashian. She has enough real world fame to book an interview with anyone in the world, and she has enough social media clout to have an audience of millions that aspires to her lifestyle. She's no stranger to my channel, with one of my more iconic videos being me um, spiraling because of the size of her kid's playroom. Her and her entire, like, Kim Kardashian clan. <laughs> Oof. They've always perfectly <laughs> walked the line between, like... He's like, Kim Kardashian clan. Oh. <laughs> Oh, God, I love him. Unattainable wealth and, oh, snap, she just like me. But, oh, my gosh, they did not just blur that line during quarantine. They erased it. Yeah. So Mrs. Kardashian West decided to flex her birthday party. I mean, having a party during a pandemic is... You see where I'm going with this. But you see, hers was okay because it was actually on a private island where she administered COVID tests to everyone beforehand. After two weeks of multiple health screens and asking everyone to quarantine, I surprised my closest inner circle with a trip where we could pretend things were normal for just a brief moment in time. She then goes on to describe her... All right, that's it, everybody. We're going to a private island. I'm going to take all y'all to a private island. You got to quarantine for two weeks. Make sure you get checked. You got to go to the doctor and get checked before and after. And then we're all going to a private island because we just want a sense of normalcy. So we're going to a private island because that's what makes us feel normal. Just saying. Just saying. That's what makes us feel normal birthday party which despite happening on an island appears to have been drier than the sahara desert she then ends it with i realize that for most people this is something that is so far out of reach right now so in moments like these i'm humbly reminded of how privileged my life is that was so tone deaf when i saw that tweet i was like girl girl you have people here that cannot pay their rent you have people who are worried about are they going to put food on the pay table or are they going to pay for the lights like and then I was so mad. And then you're going to put that hashtag, this is 40. I would love to meet Kim Kardashian West in Minecraft. That's all I'm going to say. 
<laughs> like the live to go to the private island. That's right, guys. If you want to go to that private island, you have to like this live. Because you're not going to get invited if you don't like the live. Just saying. Hashtag this is forced. So obviously, like, literally everyone hated that. She actually got ratioed by somebody telling her to read the room. She was kind of getting ratioed left and right. But what I found interesting was her getting ratioed by a normal person. Losing pay, dealing with unemployment, missing government checks, new childcare responsibilities. These things are more relatable than a private island trip. I yep. mean, that's kind of obvious. Literally any normal person could have told you this, but I guess Kim K had to get the point some kind of way. Nobody was mad at her for being rich enough to live. Okay, Chelsea, I am pinning, I am pinning that comment. Eat the damn rich. Eat them. I mean, they're treating it like the let them eat cake type of situation, so. Live in an actual private fantasy world where COVID-19 doesn't exist. But I think everyone was kind of mad at her for sharing that and somehow thinking that was an appropriate choice. So next time they did it, the card Jenners decided not to share. See, Kendall Jenner threw a birthday party right after that with no masks, of course. And this one didn't get nearly as much backlash because this time they had a no social media rule. Take all the photos you want, but please do not post on social media of any kind. Spoiler alert, people took photos and posted them on social media of every kind, actually. <laughs> Besides the Kardashians and the Jenners, there were so many people there. The Weeknd, Doja Cat, Justin Bieber, Haley Bieber, Saweetie, Quavo, Jaden Smith, Winnie Harlow. All people that I am very disappointed in and expected better from. Except Justin Bieber. I don't expect anything from him, actually. Amen, brother. Amen. Don't expect nothing from Justin Bieber, that's for sure. King Quinn's like, facts. Guys, 22 viewers, only 12 lights. Come on. <laughs> It's all right, we'll get it, we'll get it. Can you believe, he put this out on the first. It is only the fourth, and he's already had two and a half million views. Two and a half million views, but that's how good he is. Yeah, I didn't hear about that party either. Honest, because I don't watch them that closely, so yeah. Actually, and just so we're clear, they were all in violation of very clearly outlined Los Angeles guidelines that said gatherings of people from three or more different households should be held outside with face coverings and socially distanced. So my reaction would be remorse, I think, if I got caught lacking in this way because my friends just couldn't stay off of the gram. But for some reason, Chris Jenner went on the offense. They're commenting and they're being critical. I can't control that. She went on some radio show that I've never heard of before and explained that they were all tested beforehand, apparently. But like the rapid tests that take 30 minutes to get the results. And we make And those rapid tests suck for one. And two, those rapid tests only have a 70% um like truthful rating. In other words, you can they have a higher percent of false uh a false reading about about four or five people at my job because if you think you have the symptoms they send you to go take the rapid test and you have to come back to work um and about four or five people who ended up with coronavirus they had the symptoms they went and took the rapid test came back to work and they worked a couple of days more and they got even worse so they sent them to take the test again and it came out positive because that first test showed them negative, but they still had the symptoms and the symptoms were getting worse. And when it got to the point they couldn't even come to work, they would send them to go get the uh, rapid test and they came out positive. Hence the reason why it's spreading like wildfire through my shop. Whoa, what's with the JB hate? Wait, JB, who's JB? Oh, Justin Bieber? Oh, Justin Justin Bieber? Oh. I I wish every day Canada would be like, can we take it we'll take Justin Bieber back, but they won't. They won't take Justin Bieber back. Sure that everyone in our family and our closest friends are tested religiously. So, you know, we do what we can. We we try to follow the rules. I don't understand why you need to try to do the right thing when you can just simply do the right thing she's acting like 
she didn't hold the party in spite of very clearly outlined guidelines. You know what? If you, as we live our lives trying to be just really good people. Her excuses are honestly pathetic when there are people who can't even get clearance to hold funerals for their loved ones who have died from COVID-19 because of social distancing guidelines that they ignored so Kendall could have a party. Honestly, the entire Car Jenner clan has historically been shown great rewards for showing off their just like insurmountable wealth gap. But the global pandemic has shifted this from something that they can profit off of further into something that they kind of have to hide if they want people to stop hating them. It's obvious that they're used to being praised for their bland but expensive life. I mean, we have Kim K's bizarre Q&A video with Vogue. There was Kylie Jenner's office tour in that office that it was like super apparent. She never does mm -hmm. any work in. And then over here we have mine and my mom's. What's up, NASA? Um, okay, Drama Parody said, why would they even show up with symptoms? That's crazy. Um, fun fact. My brother thought he had just had the flu. I found out the reason why he thought he had the flu. He works in a jail. He works in the medic in a jail. And one of the girls he works with, she came in sick and said she had the flu. Well, then he got sick. He thought he had the flu. It was almost a full week until it was like, wait a minute, you're not you're not getting better. You need to go take a test. He went and took a test. Come to find out, he had the Rona. And what happened? He passed it to my 71-year-old parent. All because that girl lied. She knew she had Rona, but she said she had the flu. And she still went to work. The whole time she knew she had Rona and my brother thought he had the flu and come to find out he had Rona and that's how my parents got it. And they had to tell my brother because uh, he went back to work yesterday I think. They had to tell my brother don't say anything. Don't get yourself in trouble because he wants to cuss her out because you know our parents. So that's why you need to do PCR tests on these people. Shove that swab down their throat and let's see how often they think about going outside. <laughs> Angelo. Angelo. <laughs> uh, Chelsea's like, yep, I myself have had to sit out of three funerals. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. Can you imagine not being able to avoid having a giant party? Jesus. I exactly. Uh, Nessa, that happened to my aunt Zylie. She was negative on two rapids until she went in the ER from being dizzy, weak, and winded. She had pneumonia by then and they treated it as COVID. Yeah, exactly. I've been having symptoms for weeks and tested negative and I haven't been to work. I, I, with this day and age, I don't care if it is the flu. Just think about it. Even if you just did have the flu, if you pass that flu to someone else and they end up having the flu, what happens if they end up with COVID on top of that flu? It makes it even worse. So if you're sick, stay home. Stay home, please. And, and I understand it's so hard for people to stay home because you stay home. Like, I don't have any sick days left. I don't have any vacation days left until June. Well, I mean, hopefully by the end of March, I'll be out, like, completely. But, I mean, if I get sick right now, I'm not getting paid for that day off. You know? So, she probably didn't wear her mask pro properly. Uh, isn't that a crime? I mean, real jail time, but a document... <laughs> May May, you would think, because if she knew she had COVID and she told people she had the flu... I mean, I'm going to be honest. If it wasn't for the fact that they're already working in a jail, I want to go up there myself. And it's not too far from where I live. But they're already in a jail. So at that point, if I go up there, I mean, it's only going to be like a side step to the left and I'm in a jail cell. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I want to go talk to her. Because my parents got Rona because she had to lie. Exactly. We should be staging home, staying home with the flu too. It's hard as hell to do, but 
anything on top of COVID. Exactly. Exactly. Chelsea's like, I know that's a crime with HIV. Yeah. So, I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is my brother's got a hot head like I do. So, hopefully he doesn't get fired. The reason the rapids are fall so often is because you won't test positive until three or four days into full-blown symptoms. Oh, did not know that, Jess Carter. And that actually makes sense because when they started having the symptoms, they got worse. It was like three or four days after, and then they went to take the test again. They got positive. That makes sense, Miss Jess Carter. Makes sense. Uh, it's true, Amanda Pants. I'm telling you, I, you don't know how bad I want to go up there and have my brother point her out. I'm be like, Come here. Come here. I, I, I want to have a conversation with you. I, I, let me tell you about uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mama and Daddy Ziley. Let me t let's talk about my mama and uh, daddy. We need to have a conversation. Because you're going to feel worse than having the flu or Rona by the time I get done with you. Good thing you work for the medical, medical department. Oh, all right. Clo I mean, closet. We have mine in my mom's office. There's Chris Jenner's house tour with Architectural Digest. Okay, actually, I'm not going to lie. That is, wow, that's a pretty house. I, I wish I could. But my point is, before COVID, you know, this wealth gap basically meant, oh, Kim K can afford a Louis Vuitton bag, and you can't. And people are open to that message for some reason. But now... I just realized I don't have to speed up on this. Although I love his voice, but we can go a little bit faster with this. Bird sees, lol, so all the birds will poop on her car. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Amanda, Amanda, Amanda Pants is always trying to get me to fight. I made that, I, I made that aggressive positivity post this morning. She goes, show me an example of aggressive positivity. I'm like, you see that face on me? <laughs> you see that face I'm using right there? Throw all the damn party influencers in jail. Amen, Nessa. This wealth gap means Kim Kardashian can afford to keep her family safe <laughs> from COVID-19 and live with the same comfort level that she had before. And you cannot. That's not Absolutely. like an aspirational thing to share with people anymore. It's now antagonistic. You would have to have like a severe lack of awareness to not realize that. But... What do we expect from the Kardashian Jenners, if not a severe lack of awareness? I mean, the only unscripted video Kim Kardashian has ever posted in her life is um, not even one I'm allowed to play on YouTube. Exactly. Living your life above the rules because you can afford fancy testing sites and private islands and expensive getaways is definitely a choice. But at the very least, it doesn't put anyone in harm's way, what with them all being tested and whatnot. So that's actually why I started them off as an example, because they're the least infuriating out of everyone we have to go through in this video. Lana Del Rey, indie singer, internet minute. Oh my God, this one pissed me off. This one pissed me off so bad. I tried to give them the benefit of the doubt because I was super young. I would probably have slipped up too, but they should have thrown me in jail too so I would learn my lesson. Girl, we all have passed. Oh, is Miss Dion here? Oh, there's Miss Dion. Oh, yes, this video is so good. I, I don't, King, King Quinn, I don't know. I really, really, really don't know. Manda Pants, I can't help it. I like to poke the bear. You really do, Manda. Oh, Manda, uh, I don't think you were here for the announcement. Um, I'm not, I'm, we're going to skip Beast Boy for one week, and I'm not going to be posting. I'm not going to be posting on Sunday. I'm going live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night, because Tuesday and Thursday I have to stay late at work. So it's pretty much going to be like a... 13 hour day, 13, 14 hour day for me. So I, so my regular nights, Tuesday and Thursday, I'm not going to be streaming. So it's going to be Monday, Wednesday and Friday next week. So I, we're skipping Beast Boy for one week, which is good. Cause I want more people to see that tour video because, uh, not enough people have seen that one. And I think that one's like really super important. What did Madam say? I hope her shirt makes her skin itchy. I know that's right, Madam. She's been on a years-long mission to secure her spot as the queen of controversy, and um, 
boy did she make a lot of headway with this whole mask incident now i've already gone over the situation in a video one of the 12 videos i uploaded to my other channel this month and that video was actually an update to a video i uploaded here about lana del rey she's kind of a lot but um her image sure has changed since that first video i put up about her so this all started when lana del rey decided to hold this um impromptu book signing at barnes and noble which is during the pandemic, it was for Violet Bent Backwards Over the Grass, which is the name of her latest poetry collection, apparently. It's obviously completely irresponsible to encourage people to gather in such a small space over something unnecessary. Okay, first... What was Lana Del Rey wearing? That is ugly. I mean, I'm not a fashionista, okay? I wear jeans and hoodies and t-shirts. The name of her latest poetry collection, apparently. It's obviously... What the hell is that? Because that's not cute. Maybe not on her. Maybe it's the shoes. Is it the shoes? I don't like that outfit. I mean, obviously, the mask, of course. But I mean, like that outfit. I don't like that outfit. Completely irresponsible to encourage people to gather in such a small space over something unnecessary. And with that unnecessary thing being selling more books, I actually find that despicable. I can somewhat understand celebrating your own birthday in spite of the lives of the elderly and others at risk around you but celebrating your own product then again having listened to some of this poetry i guess i can see why she would need to do any and everything to sell more copies of this people think that i'm rich and i am but not how they think so that in and of itself is like grading but where it gets worse is that she was not social distancing she was taking photos with fans all up in their face which i wouldn't even want even if like I was hanging out with a famous person. The IG pick will still work if you're here and I'm here. You don't need to. Okay, anyway, that's not what this is about. Actually, it's exactly what this is about because you should be over here if you could potentially give me COVID-19. And yes, you potentially gave all of them COVID-19. What with the mask she was wearing? I mean, thankfully, I didn't hear any reports of anybody coming down after that. But this is not even really a mask. It's a decoration. I feel like most normal people know this, but like masks are designed to stop droplets from exiting your mouth. That thing she had on her face wouldn't even stop a loogie from exiting her mouth. But I guess she just wanted to make a statement, which is that nothing comes between Lana Del Rey and the hot air she's constantly spewing. Not even a COVID safe mask, apparently. So oh, he's just getting warmed up. I love it. He's just getting warmed up. LDR, my problematic favorite. I hate it so much that I enjoy her music. Same goes for Azalea Banks. Can't wait. Allegedly, Angelo. Did you just say you enjoy Azalea Banks? Sir. Um. 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 Are your ears not working? I mean, I just need to know, like, are, are like, are, are your ears not working? Do you, do you have to turn things up like really, really loud, or what? 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 Oh, what's up, Tetra? What's up, Dragon Slayer? Ugh. I don't know. Allegedly, Angela might have to hear about that one later on Twitter. I'm still deciding because I'm really tired. I might need, I have to go to bed after this, but I am, um, I'm shocked. I am, uh, disappointed. I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm disappointed. The woman has more talent in her left toenail than most of the top 20 combined. Well, sir, I don't go by the top 20. Because you see, I was born in 19 mofo and 75, okay? I started listening to hip hop as soon as it started coming out over the radio waves, okay? And let me tell you something. The women that came up in the 80s and the 90s going up to 2000 had more talent in their pinky nail than any of these other women rhyming right now so pssst. it's over missy elliott missy elliott was in the 2000s so we're gonna put her in that group too but pssst. stop yourself stop yourself i know don't make me go off well, Dragon Slayer, you're wrong too. And I mean that with love, like assertiveness, assertive love. 
I would beat Banks the fuck up though. So would I. She probably buys her chickens from the royalty she makes off me streaming to 12. I'm done. I'm no. We're gonna continue this. We're not gonna continue this conversation. We're gonna continue the video. I am not getting in this. I mean, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with the chickens. I don't have a problem. My family, my family, uh, in, in New York and Puerto Rico, they do santeria. I don't have a problem with the chickens. Now, I do have a problem with uh, digging up the the pet and doing what she did. I do have a problem with that. I have to admit, have we not seen the movie Pet Cemetery? I'm just saying. But besides that, I don't have a problem with the chickens. Oh my God, what's going on? Allegedly, Angelo is starting shit drama parody. That's what's going on. Allegedly, Angelo is starting shit over Azalea Banks. Miss, she wants to fat shame somebody when she can't be talking about somebody else. I'm sorry. Meg... She can't even hold a candle to Meg and she wants to fat shame her. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Not when she got joked on. Not when she got joked on about her teeth and she cried on stage, but yet she wants to fat shame somebody. Azalea Banks, bye. Girl, bye. Bye. You want to forget how you cried on stage in front of everybody and the cameras and stuff like that because they started joking you about your teeth, but you want to sit there and fat shame somebody and put it on social media? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Gonna sit there and fast name somebody when she sit there and cry. Because she was on a show that does jokes. But she gonna cry when they joked her. Just saying. A bit. She has a bit, which is brew. What did Chelsea say? <laughs> this stream is a mess. I love it. It's because of you. It's a mess because of you. Damn it. What did Chelsea say? Emily, imagine Xylee tweeting that. W tweeting which one? I don't have a problem. With, I don't have a problem with the chickens. The chickens don't bother me. What bothers me is you going to cry on camera because you went on a show that was a show about telling jokes on people and you cried when they started joking on your teeth. But they, but think you have the gall to fat shame Meg the Stallion. And you going to fat shame her when she's not even fat. The girl looks good. And you have the gall to do that after you cried in front of everybody about them joking about your teeth? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, she does rituals and dances, IG live, curse another celebrity. She, I, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna keep my. We're gonna stop this conversation right now. We're gonna keep going with D'Angelo Wallace, uh, alleged Angelo. You are hereby told to shut the hell up and not steer this away from everything else. Hello, bitchy sarcastic mom. Megan is beautiful. Thank you. How is Megan fat? But nope. No, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep on with this video. Let's go. We're gonna keep on with this video. Y'all y'all ain't gonna steer me wrong. So she was obviously being dragged over the coals on the internet, as you probably should for doing something this 
egregiously stupid. But for some reason, she thought, what if I just didn't respond to any of it? So a month later, the student newspaper, the Michigan Daily, did a bit of a retrospective. Lana Del Rey wore a mesh mask. What now? In it, they give a history of Lana Del Rey's previous controversies. But what is even more interesting, in my opinion, is they also give a very unique insight into how Lana Del Rey is falling out of favor with her fans, specifically. Mask I guess so. synonymous with compassion, intelligence, and human decency. Del Rey's fashion choice feels like a slap in the face for those who have been intimately hurt by COVID-19 and for those who wear their masks without issue. Celebrity status does not exclude Lana Del Rey from responsibility. That is very diplomatically worded and poignant, but it also did still manage to call her uncaring, unintelligent, and indecent, which is like... Absolutely all three, period, point blank. That dumbass mask. I'm sorry. I, yeah. That was 10 out of 10. That was a good paragraph. So Lana Del Rey finally responds. <laughs> Not sure why student paper of all things got under her news more than the actual mainstream media calling her out, but hey, who knows what goes on in the mind of Lana Del Rey? Literally everyone, because her entire career is like oversharing. The mask had plastic on the inside. They're commonly sewn in by stylists these days. I'm lucky enough to have a team of people who can do that. Oh my gosh, good for you. When she was called out in that post by people for not responding for like, I think it was six weeks almost. She claimed that she was simply too busy making music and donating money to people in order to respond for a month. And Girl, bye. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. And a half. If it honestly takes her that long to write two tweets, then I guess I finally understand why she never drops an album on time. But somehow her apology actually worked on people, despite it being, to me at least, blaringly obvious that she lied, right? Like, you didn't believe that her mask had plastic, did you? Anybody with eyes can see that this has no plastic. There's no fog, okay? When she pulls the mask down and it bunches up, it's clearly only a mesh material. Even when she's speaking, there's just like no muffling. I'm doing a little book signing and we are at the Barnes and Noble in the Grove. Oh look, a mask that matches my outfit, but still technically COVID safe. That's crazy. But notice how I sound like I'm actually wearing a mask. That's kind of what happens when you wear a mask versus an accessory. Now, last time- I love him. I love him. Of course he has a mask to match his outfit. Get her, madam. Get her. Lana Del Rey experienced this much backlash. Her fans were pretty quick to jump to her defense. I mean, even in my own comment section, it was just full of people who disagreed with me, which was fair, of course. But it's like, because Lana Del Rey is so personal and all of her music connects with her fans so hard, they are predisposed to defending her against any and everything. But it turns out COVID-19 is too serious of an issue for that to work this time. Like that article pointed out, celebrity status does not exclude Lana Del Rey from the responsibility, especially since this is a responsibility to do simple things that stop people from dying. If you're poetry book your poetry book is somehow more important to you than that you need help so you know holding a small gathering for the sole purpose of power tripping over your fans while desperately trying to push your poetry book into their hands oh my gosh that rhymed fans hands <laughs> Lana Del Rey canceled by my poetry book this is a joke Lana Del Rey is not canceled because rich people don't go away no matter how many teenagers on the internet tweet at them fun fact lord knows we know that but yes holding this event was disturbing but as much as I hate to say it I think that's like the smallest gathering that I'm mentioning in this entire video. The music industry. It's a billion dollar business. Its stars are larger than life. And it brings us all together, which is bad, unironically, because we're in the middle of a pandemic. So maybe we can just skip that part. But I guess the music industry hasn't figured that out yet. This is not to label everyone like this. There have been a lot of fantastic concerts for people being COVID safe, like Billie Eilish, BTS, tennis. There's been entire award shows held virtually to minimize risk, but also still celebrate emptiness like they always do even in person but then yeah. there's been a lot of garbage like what i'm about to go over right now so the chain smokers everyone's favorite edm band known for their bangers like closer and that I, I don't even know who they are i when he when i watched this i mean i still and i guess i never cared enough to actually look i don't even know who the chain smokers are i match all my masks oh, i believe it madam scuttlebutt Okay, maybe not all my masks. Sometimes I cheat and grab a white one. I just have some disposable ones and a few black ones, but I hardly leave the house. I can't wait till I can say I hardly leave the house. I have one with cat faces and one that says love and one that says not today, Satan. When I'm in a particular mood, I wear that one at work. And then... um. One that says, don't cough on me. And then the two I got from uh, Kat that she sent me. Yeah. I have a whole bunch of masks. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who they are. I, I really don't.
that other song they released that sounds exactly like Closer, and the other song they released that sounds exactly like Closer, and not to forget their smash breakout summer hit, that one other song that also sounds exactly like Closer. They decided oh. to headline this charity event, which is like usually good. <laughs> it was held in the affluent Hamptons area, okay? Tickets cost anywhere from $1,000 to $25,000 for some reason. Imagine paying $25,000 just to hear someone press play and then Closer part 25 through 30 plays. In other words, it was a bunch of rich people for once giving their money to someone who could actually use it, like the services that they were donating to. And according to Billboard, this event was going to follow guidelines. It was going to be fine. They had to make all these promises to get clearance in the first place, like that it was going to be masks only and people were going to be separated into various areas, etc. And so they- Okay, hold on. Okay, this is the important part. I mean, because I was just talking about gatherings. This is my favorite part, though. Hold on. Time to get into that in this video. This is my favorite part. This is my favorite part. So I've talked about how, you know, actually famous people are handling COVID-19. So we're going to bring this down to my circle. Internet famous people. Okay, now that we're here, we're going to go down like seven more circles to the bottom and talk about TikTok <laughs> famous people. There's nine circles here if you haven't done the math. Now, before I get into this TikTok discussion, there's one thing I want you to remember. He's like, okay, so we're going to go in my circle. Internet famous people. Okay, now that we're here, we're going to go down seven more to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> oh they did a collab with Hall yeah i'm gonna be honest i don't even know what halsey sounds like singing i mean i know i, I just know that she's pretty I, I don't even know what she sounds like oh i love the fact he's like okay now we're gonna go down seven more levels and we're gonna go to tiktok These people are adults. I know it's hard to tell with all the juvenile dances, the high school drama, the elementary school haircuts, but most of these people are in their- I'm just going to say, in this section, you can really, really tell that D'Angelo has had it with TikTok people. You can tell they irritate the entire shit out of him. He cannot stand TikTokers. Oh my god, he cannot stand TikTokers. Madam is like that grouchy auntie. I hate this. I hate that too. Well, no, she's not the I'm the grouchy one. She's just the one that kicks your butt. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what Halsey sounds like. 20s. Addison Ray, Blake Gray, Loray. What is with all these rays? Is that like a requirement to being popular on TikTok? Too bad Billy Ray Cyrus was born in 1961 instead of 2001. He could have been popular. Anyway, my point is these people pay taxes. They're allowed to vote. They, oh my God, they're allowed to vote. They would get drafted if there was a war. Okay, heck, half of them are already desperately trying to hide their receding hairlines. So don't think of the actions I'm about to describe <laughs> as the actions of dumb kids on TikTok. Think about it for what it really is. Unhinged adults with no capacity for empathy and no care for human life. And honestly, that terrifies me because their entire audience is just children. Oh yeah, that's what I did. That's how I went to that one right there. Oh, I just do it like this. Yeah, I knew that he had the uh, TikToks. Yeah, I don't know a Halsey song. When you move the cursor down to the toolbar, where you see the chapter names on the right side, see a little arrow symbol. Okay. <gasps> oh, shit! This is amazing. Okay. Angelo, I will give you this. You have redeemed yourself from liking whatever her name is i don't forget oh azalea banks okay you have redeemed yourself this is freaking amazing i did not know this existed <gasps> this is amazing this is amazing thank you angelo you've been redeemed you you may stay with the class i will not send you to the principals now hype house a bunch of influencers millions of followers among them and not a drop of talent basically imagine taking a boy band okay but some of them are girls and none of them sing or can sing yeah that's the hype house they're only popular because enough children happen to like their tiktoks that tiktok started promoting them and then 
now they're rich and they won't go away infinite net worth zero contribution to society so with that being said, I guess I shouldn't really be surprised at what I'm about to tell you. But unlike the traditional celebrities we talked about in part one, these people don't even try to hide what they're doing. So Influencer Collective The Hype House is one of many TikTok hubs that have thrown one of these massive influencer parties. This one was for the TikTok slash YouTuber person, Larray. He turned 22 and had his party at the Hype House Mansion. And just so we're clear, the surprise party they threw for him, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to hang out as friends. They clearly paid somebody to host this event, which is an insane thing to do during a pandemic. So because of Larray's follower count, a bunch of other influencers attended as well. And just so we're clear, they're all pathetic. This includes James Charles, Nikita Dragon. I saw a whole lot of influencers and zero masks. So basically- Oh! He's like, and this includes Nikita Dragon, James Charles. <laughs> I love this video. Oh my God, he's taking names. I'm like a little kid on Christmas and I love it. Yeah, I think y'all would recognize her. I, I probably would recognize her. Okay, no problem, Madam Scuttlebutt. Yeah, I did that when I got home. Basically, this was so egregious that everyone got called out by Tyler Oakley of all people. Shout out Tyler Oakley, I guess. If your favorite influencers are at huge house parties during a pandemic and are dumb enough to post it on social media, they are bad influences. Unfollow them. All facts, no cap on God, he don't miss for a for real. He then went on to actually tag Loray and several of the other influencers there, which is very chaotic and definitely an inspiration for this video. Hi, Loray. Hi, James. How are you doing? So Loray offered this weak apology. It's a whole lot of words to avoid saying uh, one word. Sorry. You know, this whole idea of, okay, now that you've brought it to my attention, I'll take it seriously is so warped. Do you know why? Because the people whose family members are dying from COVID-19, they never had the option to not take it seriously. It starts off as a matter of life or death for a lot of people. So yep. the fact that you can finally decide to take it seriously because people are calling you out is disgusting. James Charles put out an even weaker apology. All he could muster up were white words on a black screen. Hi sisters, I decided to cut the party footage from the video, even though I have been wearing a mask in public and te have tested negative multiple times, going to a party during a pandemic was a selfish, stupid decision. People's safety and keeping COVID-19 contained is far more important than celebrating a friend's birthday and unsafe partying is not something I want to promote to my audience. I recognize that with my platform comes responsibility and I encourage you guys to be smarter than I was. Wear your mask and continue to social distance. Love you. shoved like towards the latter part of a random video that mentions nothing about this controversy i want to encourage you guys to be smarter than i was before wait that wasn't a good james and i want to encourage you guys to be smarter than i was before that's like the i'll take it seriously comment this is just this is a non-response like you didn't do this because you were dumb you did it because you didn't care whether or not you would get covid and spread it. hey nancy it to other people i mean i'm not saying james charles isn't dumb <laughs> for that he is definitely at least he recognized that part but my point is stupidity is just the side effect here of a deep and disturbing lack of empathy. And that's not the only party like this. Like I said, there's a bunch. Tana Mojo and Erica Costell decided to go to a party hosted by Jake Paul, in which they posted this lovely clip. Listen, we don't, don't care. care. Sorry. We didn't really need the verbal confirmation that neither of these women care about anyone other than themselves. We could just tell by the fact that you were there in the first place. Tana posted this apology, if that's, if that's what you want to call it. I'm going to apologize for real later is possibly the worst take I've heard from Tana Mojo, and that's saying a lot because she has a database of those that just stretches back for years. Tana Mojo is bad takeopedia at this point, and she's, she still <gasps> went lower than her low. Now, this is all like kind of really serious, not just because it's like, oh, they decided to have fun instead of be safe. I kind of wouldn't care if you're just endangering yourself for some reason. This is a big deal because these people are turning Los Angeles into a COVID hotspot. Elijah Daniel, who's also part of that scene, has alleged that people are actually getting COVID-19, which makes sense based off of the video footage, but that they're just not saying anything to their followers or even more importantly, to each other. And if that's not bad enough, the Hype House is basically like a traveling circus. Nylea, Devora, James Charles, Nikita Dragon, these are all people that Hype House or Hype House members are collaborating with after the fact, despite their utter lack of COVID accountability. And people like Nikita Dragon, who is also at that party, are making these idiotic decisions because they know there's nothing really to lose if someone else gets COVID because of this. And there's everything to gain, what with the views that the Hype House brings. Now, as bad as all that is, I actually find what they're doing to be worse than what the traditional celebrities I mentioned in part one are doing, and that's because... Well, yeah, because they're holding, like, huge parties and 
and just everybody and their mama going to them. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like I said, the Hype House's audience is only children. There's nobody there but kids. And even though there's a couple of kids in the Hype House, the majority of people there are over the age of 18. So this is a group of adults who is modeling behavior to what they understand completely is a group of children. And this behavior is what gets people killed. Anytime the Hype House gets called out or any of these TikTok stars get called out for their behavior, you can just find a bunch of children in the replies like, oh, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Leave them alone. And it's it's twisted. It's kind of sick in a way. Like fun fact, Lorraine is not worth it. Just download iMovie and slap a bunch of effects on and uh you can easily be him yourself. And what's worse is the Hype House effortlessly evades all consequences for their actions like nothing happens to these people but then again that's actually the least surprising part out of all this because i am literally describing a group of young rich people all right this is when he gets so sway house is literally yes. the exact same thing as the hype house but they're actually talented just kidding you didn't think that was going to be true did you they're the exact same thing as the hype house but worse it's a tiktok collective of frat boys is the best way i can describe it even though i'm not sure if any all right we're getting ready to get to angelo's favorite part of them actually go to college i mean a group of mostly men just building up this giant audience of mostly young people by uploading weirdly sexual content is a lot in and of itself but much like a frat house sway house seems to have an obsession with pushing the rules as far as possible if not just breaking them and usually that's not like the biggest deal in the entire world but seeing as the rules here are the ones stopping people from spreading covid and turning everything into a covid hotspot it's kind of a big deal. Bryce Hall's 21st birthday party, I think, is one of the biggest gatherings I've mentioned so far in this entire video. Allegedly, there were 100 people there. They were all packed into his Hollywood Hills mansion, the Sway House. In some footage, it actually looks like a mosh pit. Now, this party was broken up by police officers, but not before people got photos, and it turns out there were a bunch of these frat boy-esque people in attendance. The Nelk Boys, who I'm gonna be talking about later, Josh Richards, FaZe Banks of all people, like literally, what do you gain from that? You know what, come on now, you know FaZe Banks was going to be there. Come on now. He's just as damn cocky as the rest of them. So after that, the mayor shut down Bryce Hall's power at his mansion. See, this was part of a sweeping effort to crack down on these parties. And all Bryce Hall did was make jokes about it. He posted tweets and TikToks mocking the situation. He went on Jeff Wittick's YouTube channel and was just completely unremarkable about the entire thing. You're basically like a TikToker. You're profiting off of a pandemic. You saw masks too? He was clearly sending a message that these consequences don't affect him. So I guess the government kind of realized that, so instead they just charged him criminally, which go off. Both he and Blake <laughs> Gray, aka TikTok person number 550. Y'all know I don't like Bryce Hall. I did a whole live about Bryce Hall. Bryce Hall is, to me, one of the most just needless human beings I have ever witness be famous in my life like seriously i asked a mortician is a la mortician i asked a mortician is a i guess who is a la mortician and she recently put out a video about la funeral homes being overloaded yeah it's sad Elijah said he was looking for Bryce right after this. But that's funny. This is, oh, Bryce Hall is just, he's useless. 57, they're all indistinguishable. They got charged for holding these kinds of parties. And then the attorney of Los Angeles held a press conference about it, condemning their actions. They're potential super spreader events for COVID-19. Yes. Today, given that information, I'm making an announcement about a prosecution, a series of prosecutions tied to party houses. They face up to a year in jail, as well as a $2,000 fine, which, um, $2,000? What is with these tiny fines? Okay, let me ask you this. Why not charge a $20,000 fine so that you can actually cover the- I 100% agree. I don't understand. I don't understand how- they like what's two thousand dollars to them? Two thousand dollars isn't they shit out two thousand dollars. I mean, make that shit heavy. I mean, they're literally like freaking super spreaders. I live right across a cemetery, and there's been a funeral held at least once. One person shows up and streams the funeral. It's oh. That is sad. That's so sad, Nancy. Oh, my God. Bryce Hall can eat an unripe avocado that my grandma farted on. That's how much I like him. Okay, my question is, I get the unripe, but why an avocado? And why does it have to be your grandma's fart? 
I don't get it. Oh! Ooh, I had costs of the police officers that you had to send over there. So they were at a mansion talking to rich kids instead of being able to help people who actually need it. Um, you could cover the cost of the paperwork that you had to file in order to bring these charges up in the first place. You know, why not find them $200,000? Why not make it so that this decision actually financially affects them, which is usually the point of fines. Damn right. Which are usually levied against parties or organizations that can only be affected by money because of how rich they are. Or, you know what? You know, you don't have to listen to me. You know, don't find them 20K. Don't find them 200K. Find them $2 million each. Bankrupt them. Put them out of business. Deplatform them and force them to operate in the same place as the rest of us. I love how he did that. He was like, you know what? Don't find that. Find them $2 million. Bankrupt them. <laughs> ah! I love it. I love it. And he was dead ass serious too. He looked right in that camera and says, bankrupt them. Period. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's 3 a. Oh, yeah, it is 3 a.m. there, huh? AKA the people that they're endangering by doing these actions in the first place. Like, actually take them out financially. That would, I would. I would love that. See, they live in a mansion. Yeah, sure. But their entire life is a rental. So if they got hit with a yep. fine that big, they would not. That's not their house. Those aren't their cards. Absolutely. Their whole life is a rental. Yes. Yes. Tell it. Tell it. Not be able to keep living that lifestyle. But it's almost like these ramifications aren't really about teaching anyone a lesson. They're just like, oh, we did something. Leave us alone now. It's pathetic. So fun fact, I was just thinking like only we, the non-celebrities, were the ones mad about this. But Ariana Grande actually called out these TikTokers indirectly. Did we really all need to go to Saddle Ranch that badly that like we couldn't have waited for the deathly pandemic to pass? Like yeah. we all really needed to put on our cowgirl boots and ride a mechanical bull that bad. <laughs> I, it is so we all did that instagram post that badly and you know some of them responded kind of emptily like oh yeah you know she's fair whatever blah 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 but for some reason bryce hall actually retaliated because he's an asshole I look at i'm not gonna call him out of his name we all know how i feel about bryce hall if you don't know how i feel about bryce hall there is a video on him on my channel and it's called Stop making people like Bryce Hall famous. What's up, Crystal? She's not wrong, but like unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. Necessary to call, call out a specific group, especially. Sir, do you know what's unnecessary? One, how you're wearing that ball cap. Two, your choice in earrings because it's ugly the way you're wearing it. Three, your fuckboy hairdo. Okay? And then you stand there with your shoulders out like this, like you a tough guy. That's what is unnecessary. Alright. I got that out. When there's other people doing it, because she knew that TikTokers have like a high audience. She knew a lot of people would agree because there's a lot of people that hate TikTokers especially. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously like a, like a marketing move. Because you're a fuck boy. and good for her but like she's not wrong imagine imagine thinking dude i just did the same thing i feel you i feel you ariana grande needs clout from you bryce hall a tiktok person i don't know why anyone over 1 million followers on tiktok pretends like they're 1 million followers or anything other than 1 million children any brand deal bryce hall has ever gotten in his life is because the brand wants bryce to convince his fans to convince their parents to make tell him bryce hall tell him actually famous he's not worth anything outside of the internet and he never will be because he has no talent so I don't think Ariana Grande really needs help in that area, but that's just my assessment. The morality of putting people in danger of catching COVID-19 is one thing. Tell them, baby. Seeing people actually violate clearly organized guidelines or even laws and then getting criminally charged for doing so is insane. It's absurd that these are the lengths people are going to to spread COVID. It's not like influencers being mean to each other or tweets or drama. These are pe the criminals. <laughs> they were charged criminally. And even though they're not violent criminals, it's clear that they are doing far more harm than even somebody could with a weapon. So yeah, yes. of course, I'm glad that the government is cracking down on this kind of behavior. Of course, I don't think they're cracking down hard enough. I'm certainly no, like, law and order stan, but I do believe in the power of money. Bang.
disrupt them. If TikTok is not going to deplatform them, do it yourself. But unfortunately, no damn one is actually right. taking after the fact. Damn right. Bankrupt them. Bankrupt them. Yes. Fact undoes the problem. These parties happened. COVID was <laughs> probably definitely spread already. These kids are already thinking, oh, wow, it must not be that big of a deal. I mean, who is a child going to listen to? Bryce Hall or Dr. Fauci? Do not answer this question. It hurts. I know. The impact of spreading COVID to each other is one thing, but just it's impossible to measure the impact they're having on spreading the idea that COVID-19 isn't real among children. And that's, it's terrifying. Charlie Dem Okay. I don't care about Charlie D'Amelio. We're going to go to YouTubers. <laughs> Oh, for part three, <laughs> perhaps the one you've been waiting for. I have zero tolerance policy for celebrities violating these COVID-19 guidelines, and I have even less tolerance than that for the TikTok stars. Like you two, I am incensed. I am livid, to say the least. And that is because I am inside the circle this time. I know exactly how much money these people are making. I know exactly why they're making the decision to collaborate and travel instead of just stay home like everyone else is trying to. I know why they're doing it. It's for views. There is no thought process, not even self-preservation. There is only views. A single celled organism that feeds off of clout would make the same decision that these YouTubers are making. But more than anything, I think YouTubers reaction to all of this has just shown how fake all of them are. Well, a lot of them are. Let me backtrack. I mean, of course I'm not fake. Of course you're not, baby. Go ahead. Go ahead. Show yourself. Sorry, I was just making sure my hair was literally perfectly placed. There are a lot of YouTube channels. I would, I would venture to say the majority of YouTube channels. <gasps> That is one thing I love about him. <laughs> His style of comedy, he, I mean, he's like, well, yeah, of course I, re when he got the million subs and he put it on Twitter, well, of course I deserved this million subs. I mean, but you know, he's joking, you know, he just, <laughs> he just had to make sure every hair was in place. I love him. I love D'Angelo. He deserves everything he is getting right now. He totally 100% deserves it. I love it. Wait, who is, who's cheating? Oh, Nessa cheating. Well, you know Nessa, a hussy. Just saying. You know Nessa, a hussy. We all know Nessa, a hussy. Skip and May May, a hussy too. Especially Skip. And I'm only saying that because I don't know if she's still here. So I'm kind of trying to talk shit to see if she notices I'm talking shit about her. All right, anyway. Channels are running just fine under COVID-19. Even, even big ones with a lot of people. And that surprised me. Like the H3 podcast, I was just on their podcast. Not a single COVID-19 suggestion was violated. I was safe. They were safe. You can still get views without potentially killing everyone in your city. There's a lot of beautiful content from dedicated people on this website who are still pushing it despite these new guidelines, which if I'm being honest, are nothing more than inconveniences if your job was already sitting at home anyway. But as for the people valuing views over human life, they've built their entire platform off of nothing, no substance, dumb tubers. There's a lot of people. I 100% deserve my live theme music band that follows my superhero ass everywhere I go. So I know that's right, madam. And May May's like, hey. Nessa's like, yep, straight up hussy. And then Skip's like, oh, I'm here. I'm here. You see how I get checked by people? They pass me around like I'm a child and they baby they take turns babysitting me, honestly. I would put under this category, but um, the Nelk boys and Jake Paul have to be like tied for number one. They make content embracing their own stupidity and embraced by people who are looking for bottom of the barrel videos to watch. Like nobody thinks they're actually talented, funny, or interesting. Sometimes people just want to turn their brain off and watch dumb people do dumb things. And that is why they have followers and views. They provide the dumb, even when they're not trying to. So maybe they are naturally talented at something. Hmm. Whereas most of their content is relatively harmless, if not grating. Some of them have- D'Angelo, he, he's so damn shady. He is so shady. I live for it. Oh, I live for his shadiness. Skip's like, let me live. Hussy socks are greater than judgy socks. Are you saying I'm judgy? Because y'all are hussies? 
All y'all hussies. He cited that COVID-19 isn't a warning to slow down. It is an opportunity to crank things up even higher. And seeing as that involves endangering an untold number of people, I find that unacceptable. Now, as far as the Nelk boys, this YouTuber collective has always just kind of built their platform off of uh, being obnoxious and harassing other people. But the way they have adapted their content strategy to account for COVID, they provide the dumb. A live merch drop in front of a Jersey Shore house where reportedly 1,000 people attended. None of them were wearing masks. So the police literally had to break this up and I am really tired of bringing up the fact that police had to show up to tell rich people to stop being bad. Even though arrests were made, the Nelk boy somehow just effortlessly escaped all of this and moved on to their next egregious showing. The government made a statement about it, and I have to say, the phrase knucklehead behavior. On Monday night, we saw perhaps our most extreme, which is saying something, by the way, an egregious display of knucklehead behavior in Seaside Heights. I vibe with what this man is saying. All facts, no cap on God. He don't miss for real, for real. The problem is, the Nelk boys, despite escaping that, they just do this oh. over and over again. Because they keep getting away with it. They, nothing happens. That's why they keep doing it. Yeah. Fucking idiots. Every single one of those fucking idiots. Every single one of them. Fucking idiots. I just can't say it in the way D'Angelo was because he has so much more class than I do. Fun fact, gatherings of over 10 people are pro prohibited there. I honestly find what they're doing to be more insidious than the other influencers I mentioned. Instead of inviting over a bunch of their May May, are you coming for me? Ma'am, are you coming for me? I feel like you're coming for me. Their fellow influencer friends, they are using their platform to invite over hundreds, if not over a thousand of their actual fans for nothing other than these weird power trippy moments. Like they're on some sort of deranged tour. Yes, Angelo, one thousand. I don't even know who the Nelk, I know Jake Paul. I don't know who the Nelk boys are. Who are the Nelk boys? Are they like, do they do stupid shit like Jake Paul? I, I really don't know who the Nelk boys are. Wait, you, you're glad you do what drama parody? Yeah, <laughs> no problem, madam. Yeah, I, who are the Nelk boys? May May's like, look, I was just listening to a nice live when I get called a hussy. Well, let me tell you what I was taught a long time ago, May. All right. Look in the camera. Look into my eyes. All right. If the shoe fits, lace that motherfucker up. Just saying. Those Nelk boys look dumb. I'm glad I do not know who they are. Okay, DP. Uh, which furthers the point that they are nothing without their following. They are Trump supporters slash anti-masker type. Oh, that's all I need to know about them. I don't know what a hussy is, but I vibe with it. Let me Google it real quick. Um, allegedly, Angelo, I can tell you now, you are 100% a hussy. Okay? The things you put out on Twitter... You can't deny being a hussy. You can't. You can't deny it. As a matter of fact, you're like you're like high tier hussy. You're almost in whore status. Just saying. <laughs> Maybe it's like, oh Angelo, you're wearing those hussy socks too. <laughs> He's like, how did she know? <laughs> Angelo's about to find a picture of himself when he Googles hussy. <laughs> Boyfriend agrees that I'm a hussy. I know that's right, Nancy. And that's all right. There's nothing wrong with being a hussy. I was a hussy back in the day, but now I am pure as the driven snow. I am the perfect rendition of what a lady shall be. See the halo? What's the description of a hussy? Okay, Goblin. I'm going to tell you real quick. 
you know how people okay back in the day when my grandfather used to say it 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 had more of a sting to it than what it does now but back in the day hussy was another way of calling somebody like how people will say ho or a jezebel or a lady of the night you know one of those words all right hussy was another way of saying that now when like when i say hussy to people like i don't i don't mean to except for with angelo i actually mean it when i say it to him but i mean most people i say hussy to it doesn't actually mean that they are that except for angelo he's definitely that so it's more like a term of endearment it's like how some women will say the b word to each other but like only for clothes though if I don't know you, don't be saying that shit to me. But, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things that... It's another word that women have taken back. Let's put it that way. I can hear Mr. Ziley whispering, I'm going to change that tonight. Um, I don't know how you're hearing Mr. Ziley whispering because he's at the other end of the house in bed because he got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm just saying. Some get offended by hussy label and some take it as a compliment. Exactly. That's why, you know, when I, when I literally, when I say hussy, I mean it as like a term of endearment. You know, I don't mean it like in the bad way. What halo? What do you mean? What halo? I, I walk around with a permanent halo on top of my head. Thank you very much. I'm sorry you can't see it. I'm sorry your eyes ain't working. A girl or woman who behaves in a disrespectful or inappropriate way or who has many casual sexual relationships when I was younger that brazen little huzzy Yeah, some get offended by it. What are, is that your fan base name for it? No, y'all are still the notebook crew. Y'all are still the notebook because not everybody who watches me is a huzzy. The huzzies know who they are. I'm just saying. You know how like how some people say the real OGs know who they are? The real huzzies know who they are. Some of them try to deny it, but they know, I know, that they know. Just saying. Right now, during a pandemic. Now, it got completely out of hand when the Nelk Boys decided to stage a protest for people to open their gyms back up. This was hosted by Steve Will Do It, who is one of the Nelk Boys members, and he posted it on his channel. Now, this was wrong on multiple levels. Obviously, what they are protesting for is insane and dangerous, but even worse, they kind of like fashioned it as like some sort of uh, parody of a Black Lives Matter protest. Black Lives They're Matter, stupid. Gym Lives Matter. It was a lot. So YouTube finally took action against this disabling monetization entirely by dropping them from the partner program itself. They went ahead and backed up their decision with a statement. Explain Spell with two S's, not two Z's. It's just the way I say it because I'm so damn country. Zales, it sounds like two Z's, but it's actually two S's. Yeah, King Quinn. Explaining their reasoning. I'm glad they did this. And honestly, I don't even see this as off-platform behavior, seeing as these things they were doing were winding up in their YouTube videos. As for fellow dumb YouTuber Jake Paul, I briefly mentioned this first part towards the end of my video about Jake Paul that's on this channel, but he was hosting a music video shoot for his song, Fresh Out of London. And in this shoot, he decided to include maskless crowd scenes because what music video would be complete without them? He filmed these without clearance, obviously, because why would somebody clear this during the pandemic? And so the mayor of Calabasas came forward and said there would be a zero tolerance policy for this sort of behavior in direct response to what Jake Paul did. Now, around all of this time with all these parties and whatnot, Jake Paul was involving his entire friend group, which is why it was no surprise that Tanner Fox, who runs in that circle, got COVID-19. Okay. Yeah, so we were able to run the test today, um, and it was positive for COVID. Oh my God. Okay. First of all, can we just talk about how the cameraman is sitting like a couple feet away from somebody who just confirmed that they tested positive and he's not wearing and a he's mask not wearing a mask no one oh my gosh bro they probably all have covid yeah they probably literally 
all have COVID-19. Yeah, no, you're right. Everyone in this I video agree. I mentioned probably at some point has or passed on COVID-19 allegedly. The reason yep. I bring this up, not because I feel sorry for Tanner Fox, is because Jake Paul says that he's not worried about it. And you can even hear a voice in the background saying, we don't care. Are you, are you worried about it? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> okay, well, well, that's good, but... I that's because they're idiots. That's why. They're absolute idiots. That whole just slew of YouTubers are idiots. That whole side of YouTube is full of fucking idiots. Wait, okay, drama parody. All right, so this is the last that we're going to talk about this subject, okay? There's Harlow that you're spelling, but then there's Harlot. There's a Harlot and then there's Harlow. Two different words. Flabbergasted is for me, Nessa, the configuration of those letters is hilarious. Like, who came up with that one? Oh, it does reek of Trump, doesn't it, Chelsea? But I had to call you and just let you know. So if that's not bad enough, besides the reaction from the government, besides the fact that his friends are getting COVID now, Jake Paul starts descending into COVID-19 conspiracy theories. He got confronted by the Daily Beast about his decisions to hold these parties and all that nonsense. And Jake Paul says that COVID-19 is a hoax, specifically saying COVID cases are at less than 1%. It's because he's a piece of shit. Jake Paul is an absolute... I put Jake Paul and Bryce Hall in the same... Oh, wow. Their names... Yeah. I put Jake Paul and Bryce Hall in the same category. The only difference between Jake Paul and Bryce Hall is Jake Paul can actually box. I just want to see him against a professional boxer, though. That's the only thing. But he's not that bad at it. He actually has some form. That's the only talent that Jake Paul has. Bryce Hall doesn't have any talents besides being a a douche honestly but I, I just put them in the same category all right i don't care about vlog squad or david dobrook dr mike was the dumbest one out of them all because it was dr mike the last person i have here makes me the angriest and that's saying a lot because um everyone in this video has made me see varying shades of red Do the best way to to think of the uh paul brothers sales Jake Paul is the youngest one. Logan Paul has the Farrah Fawcett hair. Logan Paul is the, he's the bigger one out of the two. And honest, I think he's better looking. But uh, Logan Paul is the one with the big hair. I call it the Farrah Fawcett hair. He has the Farrah Fawcett hair. Yeah, him and uh, Mayweather, but Jake doesn't want to do it as an expedition. He wants to do a 50-50 split. Dude, Dr. Mike really pissed me off. He made it sound like he could. Yeah, no, this one really surprised me. Dr. Mike, well known on YouTube for not just being a popular channel, but an actual medical doctor. Like, is he an influencer? Sure. But he also took the Hippocratic Oath. He literally vowed to do no harm. Like, at the very least, the other people I mentioned in this video are like idiots with no qualifications to do anything in life other than record 15 second clips of themselves but this is a licensed medical professional and it turns out he took more of a hypocritical oath dr mike had put out multiple videos i would even say video after video about covid19 and being safe and doing things the right way dr fact checks media on coronavirus dr mike day in the life covid19 dr mike interviews dr fauci on covid19 yes this is real you know and it kind of makes you think okay you made all these videos obviously you're doing i mean you have a youtube channel it makes sense and if you're a doctor well i I mean, what's the best subject? COVID-19 makes sense. But how much do you really care if you turn around and did what you did? Do you not think that once you cut off that camera, once you get that big, your life is not your life anymore. People follow you. People are going to recognize you. People are going to take pictures when you don't even know they're taking pictures of you. Did he not think about that? Yes. Yes, Dales. Exactly. Yes.
He collabed with Glam and Gore. Oh, well, that says something. Uh, guys, my friends, they loved me so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, is Gustavo here? Oh, hey, Gustavo, what's up? Real. He actually talked to Dr. Fauci. Myself, as someone who's on the front lines as a family medicine doctor, what can we do? He wasn't just telling people to be safe. He was literally the, the poster boy for handling COVID-19 the right way on YouTube. He was just so gosh darn ready for COVID. But it turns out uh, by ready for COVID, I guess he meant ready to spread it to everyone because he was caught on this bizarre yacht party. And what is it with people in yachts, by the way? For his birthday party in Miami. He was in group photos right up on everyone with no mask. He was not just social distancing. He was actually like touching the people there for the 0.2 seconds that he had a mask on. It wasn't even on properly. He traveled to Miami, which was in the state of emergency because of COVID, by the way. So yep. obviously, this caught people by surprise, and the criticism got to be way too much to ignore. He was getting called out by the mainstream media. He was getting called out by his own fans. It was like stranger than fiction and disturbing in its own right. So Dr. Mike shows up with a four minute apology video. He first claims that this was actually a surprise party thrown for him. I, I just don't get what makes him think that people wouldn't have picked up that he did that. You were making all these videos Imagine making all these videos about being careful about COVID and this is what you should do and even interviewing Dr. Fauci of all people for you to go to do it. You went, you went to fucking Florida of all states. There's two places you don't need to go during this pan, during this panini. Okay. You don't go to Florida, especially Miami. You don't go to Florida and you don't go to LA and you went to Florida. You should know not to do this. You're making almost daily videos about Rona, but you went to Florida where the governor there has not given a shit at all because he wanted money and he wants a tourist. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you, Gustavo. People are going to stick their Tims out in front of you when you're walking and trip you and watch you fall as they gather around you pointing their fingers laughing. Uh, yes, madam, that is true. Dragon Slayer, they are only thinking of themselves. Yep, 100%. What's up, vlogging? And that's great, but if that's the case, why not just say, oh, thank you so much, and then... Socially distance and wear a mask. When I went down to Miami, my friend surprised me with a private boat. Uh Why did you go to Miami in the first place? I mean, okay, they surprised you with a fucking boat. Why did you go to Miami? You know what's going on in Miami. You're a fucking doctor. You're making fucking videos about it. Why did you go there in the first place? You know what? They didn't fucking surprise him. He knew about that goddamn yacht. I'm the COVID police in my family, and even I felt like a hypocrite during Christmas when I ran to Target and Walmart for some Christmas decorations. How embarrassing for a daughter. Right. <laughs> Boyfriend. Florida is where people go to die. It makes sense. <laughs> um, as a belated birthday present. And I was very grateful. I was excited. At the same time, I was a little cautious and nervous because we're in the midst of a pandemic. In fact, he actually. Yes, you're in the middle of a pandemic and you went to Miami. Now, somebody explained to me where that fucking makes sense. You went to Miami. That's like saying, oh, I went to L.A. and my friend surprised me with a yacht. You went to fucking L.A. That's the two spots. Well, just. Avoid the state of Florida of all costs anyway. I mean, just period, period, point blank, period. But in like Miami and Orlando and like the, the big, avoid them. Hello? Misuses CDC information to make an excuse for why he wasn't wearing a mask. So I went on the CDC website and checked the guidance for wearing masks during water activities. This was a guideline for what to do when swimming, not boating. A doctor purposely giving misleading information about COVID-19 to his audience as an excuse for why- Oh my God. It should be embarrassing for him. It 
It should be embarrassing for him. It really should. This is this is dumb. This is from a fucking doctor. Why he wasn't being safe, by the way, that is legitimately appalling. He then goes on to lie about the boat capacity. I checked the local boat capacity guidelines, so we were well below that. I mean, he was obviously photographed with more than eight people there. He does uh, like this yeah. horrible risk assessment thing where he, he decides it's okay, actually. I'm young. I don't have health problems. I live alone, so I don't... You know people are dying that had no underlying health issues. You're a doctor. You made videos about it. So basically what you're saying is, is you honestly believe the people who watch you are dumb. Because I'm pretty sure the shit you said in those videos versus the shit that's spewing out your mouth right then when you're talking about the bullshit that you're talking about is totally fucking different. I'm pretty sure it is. So that means you think the people who watch you are dumb. That's all that boils down to. He thinks the people that watch him are dumb. And I guarantee you a lot of people fucking fell for it. So. Well, just know, Crystal, he thinks you're dumb. Crystal, he thinks you're dumb. He absolutely 100% thinks you're dumb. He thinks everybody who watches him, it watches him is dumb. I don't put anyone else at risk. I'm going to be following the proper quarantine and testing protocols, returning back to New York. Um, we're following all the testing, um, boat capacity, and travel guidelines. I do like his Harry Potter glasses, though. I will say that. So I thought for me, this risk level was okay. You can do literally everything he just said. You can be literally everything he is, and you can still get COVID-19 and die and or pass it to a loved one and they can die. That's the only thought process that should be going into unnecessary gatherings. He claims that he was preach, baby, preach, preach, baby, preach. Only wrong because this made him seem phony, not necessarily wrong for the action. Even considering following the rules as the guidelines that are set forth, it doesn't matter. I messed up. I really did. And I need to do better. The reason I'm saying this is because of the impact of my trip. The impact can harm the medical message that I've been delivering from the beginning of this pandemic. What I can say is that I'm gonna strive to do better. I'm a human, I messed up here, it's true. I really did. This has been a mistake. Being a human mess- He's been watching an influencer apologies. I bet you he's been watching influencer apologies. He made sure he wasn't wearing a hoodie. He made sure he wasn't on the ground crying and snotting and squirting shit in his eyes to make him look like he was crying. He's been watching influencer. He was like, I have to do the opposite of the influencer apologies. That the hair dies over that. Yeah, he does have, he has the quaff. I don't watch him like that. I've seen maybe five of his videos. He gives me alt-right vibes. <laughs> DP's like, his shirt's ugly. Dressing up is great. <laughs> Same. But in the medical profession, typically that's disastrous. Also, he was definitely trying to hide the video. The man has 6.7 million subscribers and he posted it on a channel with 75,000. And the likes were disabled. Dr. Mike is trash. He represents one of the many celebrities and influencers who are taking like the social capital gained from pretending like you care about COVID-19. Well, How's he going to put that apology when he has like 6 million subscribers, but he's going to put it on the channel with very little subscribers compared to with 6 million. Oh my God. Time living a lifestyle that completely disregards safe COVID-19 practices. Like he wants us to praise him for being just like us, but he also wants to live in a way that we can't even really get away with and would probably wind up taking out half of our family. He's honestly the- Oh my God. All right. So COVID-19 has not only been the thing to- Okay, so this is the emotional part. I'm not trying to cry today. Really drive home that influencers and I guess everyone else live in a completely different world. But it has also, interestingly, been the thing to bring these influencers crashing down back to reality as well. And I find that kind of fascinating in a way, kind of sad. That's like a super succinct way of wrapping up this video. But unfortunately, that's not like where this story ends for me personally. Um, I don't think people realize how difficult it is to sift through story after story 
of people behaving this way. Like, I don't think people realize how jarring it is on the fundamental level to see person after person care more about their temporary happiness than other people's lives. For lack of better words, it kind of destroys you on the inside. Randy Jones. So sweet, right? This is the tenth. I apologize. I'm trying to, try to get through this. This is the tenth hospital that I have been in. Drew, we love you. Love you too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, a lot more. I I ain't gonna cry. No, we ain't watching this. I ain't gonna cry tonight. I'm not gonna cry tonight. I always end up crying on damn live stream in front of you people, and I try to be tough, and I can't be tough if I'm fucking crying. Can't be tough if you're crying. I we ain't playing this part. Just know D'Angelo had a particular reason why this really hit home for him. And you need to watch that part. Because if you have a heart, it will make you at the very least feel something right here when he talks about it. Because even he starts to get into his feelings. Yeah. And, and I understand. With my parents getting it, I understand. Which, by the way, I want to um, say thank you to everyone who is watching this or may watch this for the positive vibes towards my parents. Uh, I called my dad yesterday and he sounded so good answering the phone. I was like, holy shit, you sound better. Look at you, old man. You sound better. He's like, yeah. So just to let y'all know, I appreciate the positive vibes I was getting about my parents. I need to put that out on Twitter too because I had a bunch of people give me some positivity about that. So I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Uh, and I knew mama would be fine. I, when I was talking to my dad, mom was fussing in the background. I said, Oh, she's good. All right. As long as she's fussing, as long as my mom is fussing and cussing, she is good. So just to give y'all a uh, thank you for that. I appreciate the positive vibes on that one. Cause I was worried about that one. My, uh, my mother is insulin dependent diabetic and my dad has COPD and I was extremely worried about that. So I just want to say thank you. I really, really appreciate it. So, yeah, I know crying isn't a weakness, but it seems like I've been crying a lot lately and I wasn't trying to try cry again. All right. I'm tired. I don't want to cry, you know, but yeah, they are recovering well from that. Um, again, I'm going to remind y'all we're skipping beast boy this weekend. Okay. Because it's super bowl. And I'm going to be streaming Monday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. Uh, same time, 8 o'clock. Um, so, I got to prepare a story for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then that following Sunday, I'll be back with Beast Boy. So, we're going to skip Beast Boy for a week. Just to let y'all know. Yeah, my mom was fussing in the back. It was funny. I was talking to my dad. And then my mom was in the background saying... Well, I don't know. You hear me talk. So just take how I talk, times it by about three, and that's my mother. I know. I wonder where I get it from, right? She get it from her mama. That's me. Um, And I was like, oh, mom's cussing out something. He was like, yeah. I said, oh, she's feeling better, huh? He was like, yeah, she's feeling better. She's fussing and cussing. So... Well, you know, last week was WrestleMania... And usually when I do my streams, I'll have like, but a lot of people were watching WrestleMania and they had to go back and watch the video. So I'm skipping scoop Super Bowl. Oh, that's true. Uh, Quinn. Oh, I did. I cried watching it. Super Bowl. Oh, is that who's singing on the Super? Wait, I thought they said. I thought they said uh, Jennifer Lopez was doing Super Bowl. It's uh, Miley Cyrus doing Super Bowl? I mean, I like Miley Cyrus, too. I've always liked her. I'm going to tell you now, I can't listen to Wrecking Ball without crying. I cannot. And God, don't ask me to sing to it, because I'll really start crying. Oh, thank you, Angelo. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. I'll never forgive Xylee for interrupting my crying session just now. 
Yeah, man, the Super Bowl is Sunday, so I'm um so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna skip the Beast Boy. We're gonna bring it back the following Sunday, and I'm gonna stream. I'm gonna try to stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm definitely doing Wednesday and Friday. I'm gonna try to do Monday. So and hopefully it's something that I can actually research this weekend. Cause honestly, I like doing React videos, but I'm not. I like React videos, but I don't want to do it all the time. I really like researching and showing y'all, showing y'all the tea and, and catching somebody at their words and stuff like that. I'm serious. I'm starting to thinking about knocking some heads. I just don't know if I want to take that step yet or not. She's going to be on her rock and roll bag. Oh. I recall a poem by the girl. Oh, yeah. No, I really love that poem. That poem was good. It's not even sad. Oh, you talking about the Wrecking Ball song? It is sad, actually. I think it's sad. I'm going to tell you what, I honestly think Miley Cyrus is doing the music now that she was actually meant to do. Honestly, I think this is her truest form of what she is meant to do, the music she's doing right now. I think everything else really was, <sighs> everything else was to separate herself from uh, the Disney character because if you notice a lot of the girls who leave Disney they do something dramatic that pushes them away from the reputation they had at Disney and then they go back to being normal they go they go really wild and then they go back to being normal and I think what Miley is doing right now is actually what she was meant to do I really believe that yeah, it, it is perfect for her voice, 100%. And she's got a voice. She's got a voice. I do like Miley Cyrus. I really do. And I think she's, again, I think she's doing right now what she was meant to do the whole time. All that other shit she was doing when we were looking at her sideways going, Miley, what the fuck are you doing? She would, I guarantee you, she was doing that to push away from her Disney persona. Just like every other chick who stepped out of Disney... That's what they did. They went extreme and then they came back to who they really are. Yes, me too. Me too. I really think she is being true to herself now, which is good because she looks happier. You can hear in her voice. She's really happy with what she's singing. I mean, it's just an overall, like there's an overall glow about her now. You can really see happiness coming out of her. And I love it. I love to see it. Love to see. I love to see anybody excel in an art that they love and doing it the way they want to do it. Yeah, exactly, Quinn. I've never, I've never seen Black Mirror. I heard about it, but I've never seen it. Her sis is pretty fantastic too. See, I don't know. I don't know um, if her sister is not. I still feel the need to research Azale's unearthing pets. Yeah, it was a cat drama parody. You can look it up. As told by Kenya, made a whole video about Miley being a trailblazer. She, she is. Oh, did she really? Oh, that's awesome. I tweeted a clip where they show her vocal. Tr oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's right, because I liked it. Yep. Yeah, I heard it was good, Zales. I heard it was good. Um, Was there anything else I wanted to... All right, so I told y'all about the schedule. I told y'all we're skipping Beast Boy. Um... Yeah, I think that's it. So I'm going to research because I already know what we're when the newest Beast Boy episode. Um, I'm going to give you all a hint. The title is going to be Women, Mods and Beast Boy. Oh, my. That's 
going to be the title of it. But I'm going to do some research this weekend. Maybe I can show some receipts, do some stuff like that. I'm thinking about, is Tetra still in here? Tetra, are you still in here? Tetra may kill me for this. Tetra. I might do a streaming, uh, I might do a video game stream this weekend, too. Tetra's not in here. All right. Because I might do a... I, I might... <sighs> I might do a live by Edwin's Generation. Noah Cyrus! That's, that's the name. Noah Cyrus. That's right. Yeah, I don't really know Noah. But I knew who that was the name. What, you sk skip? You cry? No. You're like cold as ice, girl. What you doing crying? What you doing crying? But yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm figuring out what videos we're going to do. Um, I went to a Beast Boy Live today and uh it was kind of funny what he's talking about oh he's back to talking about edges oh i have a question okay so i have some people in here that follow without a crystal ball or they follow the drama with without a crystal ball okay is he he is the only one that i've ever heard that he insinuates she's a drunk does she get drunk a lot i mean i know she has but I mean, is it a problem with her getting drunk on streams or whatever? Or is he just being funny? Because I've heard about the one stream where she was talking about like when she's older and younger guys or whatever. But, you know, I... It, it, it seems like Beast Boy's now turning his jokes towards her as in her drinking. Or he'll do a sniff sniff or he'll he'll literally talk about her drinking. Okay, she drinks, but a dr okay. See that's what I thought. Yeah, she but okay. So there's a difference between drinking and then being, like, he acts like she sloshed all the time in his jokes. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, and that's what he'll do. He'll go, you know, like you're slurping or whatever. And then every now and then he'll do a sniff sniff, which we know what that means. I I'm just trying to figure out, is there any truth with these jokes that he's doing? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're talking about a dude who's smoking. I mean, now granted, I don't have a problem with smoking weed. I think weed should be legal everywhere. I don't give a fuck. Nobody should be going to jail over no damn weed. Okay. But we're also talking about a dude who smokes weed and insinuates about smoking weed. Although he's not playing that nasty song, I've noticed. He, I th he's kind of stopped playing that nasty song. So, also the sniffing, I saw people talking about her doing, you know, blow. And it's a lot what people say about, okay. Without a crystal ball has always been respectful to, hey, you know what? Uh, drama parody, I'm going to be honest with you. You're not the first person who has told me that. Um, I have a few friends that um, they actually talk to her and they don't have a problem with her. I mean, they understand where she's been problematic and they understand where she has messed up, but she's always been respectful to those people. And, you know, and I, I you know, I always knew I wasn't going to become a Katie Joy channel. Uh, that was crazy. You said something up here about Edwin. What did you say about Edwin? Uh. Oh, Xylee, I found Edwin whenever he went live after that Jeffrey Hansen interview. Yeah, I found Edwin before that because I was really starting to follow the commentary channels. Um, I don't know. I feel like he's changed. 
But I don't know if I want to beat a dead horse. So I don't know if I'm doing doing a video on him or not. And, I, and I'm thinking about... Oh, yeah, you're late because we're about to leave, Karma. <laughs> but hey, welcome. Welcome. Um, I'm thinking about start doing uh, small videos. Like just me sitting here. Short stories. You know, like eight, maybe ten minute videos. Um, and putting them up on the nights that I'm not live. So I can talk about what's going on that day. Uh, yeah, she doesn't do blow. That was just silly. The woman is a hot mess in a lawsuit. I have stopped watching her recently as sick of all nonstop drama. The sniffing is not proven, but she does have a drinking issue in my opinion. I used to love her, but she did some stuff, so I backed off. Every time somebody says something about him, he switches up. He's probably tight. People like shaky more. Eh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of his mobs bump it on the low. I, I'm going to be honest with you. He, he kind of, I don't, it might be a combination of both because how I've talked about that song too, it's pretty much when he stopped doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was talking about the song is dumb. You need a new song. I mean, this is just getting ridiculous. And he says he won't play no music on that channel anymore. He said it tonight. Uh, she would be one of the most problematic YouTubers I've come across, but plenty of others need looking at. She has enough channels going after her. Yeah, see, that's the thing about without a crystal ball. I'm going to be honest. Okay. I can see it from both sides. In the sense of the people that actually have talked to her and like her. And, and, they un and every single person I've talked to, they understand where she has messed up. And they understand where she has been problematic in some ways. But then you have channels that are dedicated to making her life hell. At what point, what does bullying do? Like some channels, and I'm not saying all, I am not saying all the channels that cover her. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all the channels that cover her. But some of those channels, they're straight up bullies. Like, I, I listen to the shit they say, and I'm like, um, I know you're not talking. I know you're not talking by what I see in that camera. Uh-uh. I know you're not talking. No, ma'am. Mm-mm. You know? And it's just, at what point does the bullying go too far? She did an article about almost being an alcoholic a while ago. Okay. All right. Uh, people always take it too far and then it makes a valid call out into making that person a victim and the call out person is a bad guy too. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It's starting to get to a point where I feel like Katie is becoming a victim because of how bad some of these channels are being towards her. And I'm not talking about holding her accountable and saying, listen, lady, you need to stop this, this, and this. I get those. I get it. I understand. She needs to be held accountable. I get it. I'm not talking about those channels. I'm talking about the channels that are downright nasty about her. Like, as in, ew, like, stop. Can the woman take a fart? Can she go to her own bathroom and take a shit without you saying something on YouTube? I don't know. It just seems like it's starting to be borderline bullying. People go live like, did you see what she had for dinner? Yes. Yes. I'm talking about Katie Joy, uh, Karma. I'm surprised Edwin is out here talking shit when he just got all of his little embarrassing DMs exposed for the world to see. It, you know what? He's not talking shit. That's the funny part. Edwin's not out here talking shit. Everybody else is talking shit for him. Edwin is not doing it. He went on a nine hour live, cried three times on that live. You know, he had a little bit of a fit. No, but he's sensitive. It, it's just his personality, okay? Not everybody's made the same. It's his personality. But then you got Augie making a video about him. Then you got 
then you got tipster making a video about them, and then they're talking about these smaller commentators you don't punch up. How'd you get where you're at? Y'all talk about drama and news. How'd y'all get where you're at? It's not because y'all punched down. It's because you punched up. And what's the reason why you punched up? Because when people get bigger, they don't punch across the table at their peers. They don't. And that's the problem. That's why smaller channels usually punch up because they see the people who are peers with those bigger channels aren't doing it across the table. Um, yeah, that's not accountability. It's bullying. And that's what irks me. You cannot even say, oh, I like the top KJ war this night without them. One of them channels calling you a, a ball. Yeah. See, I don't understand that. I, okay. Perfect example. Y'all know I don't like Keemstar. Y'all know I don't like Keemstar. I've had Keemstar on this channel, and I have cussed his ass out, okay, and called him a troll and everything. I didn't back down, wasn't going to, never will. But when Keemstar is right on something, I still retweet him and say he's right. Or if I don't like something he says, I will retweet him and tell him to shut the fuck up. But when he's right about something and I agree with it, he's right. I mean, I, I, it just, I see a blindness with KJ that the girl can't even take a shit without somebody saying, Hey, it was off color today. Hmm. Did she do too much? This, did she eat too much peanut butter? Did she do this? Did she eat her greens? I mean, seriously, it's like, dude, I don't give a fuck. But also she said James killed his mother. Well, that's true. That's true. It, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That that's true. But how many times make a video on the same? That's what I don't get. So can't even wipe her ass without people analyzing how many times she wiped. Yeah. No, no, no. He wasn't talking shit. No, he's not talking shit. Um, I found a video that was critical of Edwin, but it wasn't about um it was basically what I've been thinking about Edwin lately before all that other shit came up but I don't know if I want to do it because I don't know I, I I don't know if I want the drama of doing it or not but it's actually a good review on basically how Edwin has changed over the last month that he's not the same person that she started watching the lives of and and I have to agree he's not the same and this was before the whole Anision shit came out that he was in that documentary. So it was before that. So to be honest, the reason why so many people, so many KD channels have popped up is because she told her subs if they have an issue with her to create their own content and then they did. Oh, well, shit. Okay. It's punching down supposed to be okay. That seems wrong. Um, punching down, I would say is wrong. But I welcome it. Punch down on me. I'm okay with it. Like if Beast Boy, for, for example, all right, I'm talking shit about Beast Boy. I got two videos out on him. If he made a video punching down on me, I can't blame him. I've made two videos. The only difference is there's a difference between me and Beast Boy. I show receipts and he does not. He just talks shit. I welcome it. But the thing is, is he's not going to talk about me if he knows about it. He's not going to talk to me because he doesn't want, he doesn't want to steer people to this channel and see what I'm showing. I welcome it. Please punch down. I appreciate it. At this point, I think the situation with KJ has been covered and there's nothing left to say. Oh, they say a lot. Well, she, some of her lives, she's kind of... Yeah. I am always there to second your shut the fuck up Keem's <laughs> tweet, right? He watches all the lives that's about him. He stops doing things certain people joke him for. Like, for some reason, he stopped showing his face on lives after the stream about Jim on Vic's channel. Well, now... 
because he did it today and apparently he's been to it one he does his lives and then he puts them behind the paywall which is fine a lot of youtubers do it i'm not hating on him for that he has members and that's a member perk to be able to go back and watch those lives Two, he has to get 50 likes on a live for him to go on camera. And I don't understand what's going on with this blue light that he's using. Like, it's blue, like, right in his face. Not even in the background. Like, the whole face and wall and everything is blue. I'm like, damn, are you trying to be like Nick Snyder? Nick Snyder used to do that shit back in the day. I'm just saying. It's sad that Katie misses the forest, truly believes. I'm going to be honest. I think half the problem with Katie. Now, you know what? If if people send me hate for this, I'm just going to say this and I'm getting off. All right. But I'm going to say this is this is this is what I think about Katie. And I've actually said it about in one of the lives um because i was going after uni rock because to me i hate somebody who says that they're a friend to somebody and then they stab them in the back and honestly uni rock used katie all right but this is my thing about katie i think katie made wrong moves when her husband got laid off and she became the sole breadwinner and i think that put a lot of pressure on her. And you know some people when they have a lot of pressure. They act out. And I think Katie started acting out. Because all that pressure was on her. And then all of a sudden here comes Toddy with the lawsuit. And oh my god I may lose everything. And I'm the sole breadwinner. And she lashed out. Not saying it was right. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's right that she did that. But I think that's. That's the mindset behind it. Because quite honestly, I would probably do the same. I have to admit, I would probably show my ass if somehow my livelihood was in jeopardy. Especially if it's something that I had done and I should have known better. So between the embarrassment and the pressure of being the sole breadwinner... I would probably act out too because the because the anxiety behind it all. Because I used to watch her. I found her because I can't help it. I'm a reality TV whore. And so she was talking about the Duggars and, and Sister Wives and stuff like that. That's how I found her. And I mean, and then I noticed she started changing. Like, her attitude started changing. Yeah, I heard about that GoFundMe thing. No, I know. Would you literally show your ass if you're live? Oh, honey, I would start an OnlyFans so fast. Listen, people are into my body types. People will pay good money to see this body type. And old, too. I am 45. I am close to being a senior citizen. People will pay to see me. Okay? No, but that, that's what I think. Um, I just, I really think stress is on her. But I mean, I, listen, people dislike her for their own reasons, and that's fine. We know I'm not going to become a Katie Joy uh, hate channel. Because um, if anything, she's consistent in what she does. You know, I'm not her biggest fan, but I'm not her biggest hater either. You know, I know how it is when, uh, I know how it feels when people hate you so bad that you can't even take a shit without somebody talking about it. You know, that's not a good feeling. No, and I know all that, Jess Carter. I know. I just, I don't... (sighs) I don't like her nor dislike her. I still listen to, I have to admit, I still listen to her Duggar. Her Duggar and her Sister Wives videos, I still listen to them. I don't listen to her live streams. I just want to hear about the Duggar because I'm a reality TV whore. I can't help it. Damn right, Nessa. I get it, Jeff. I I just, I don't know. Well, 
Well, in defense, I can understand where the established drama channels had a problem with her. I can understand where they had a problem with her. But it's also funny that the ones that she has a problem with are also the same ones I have. Well, not all. Most of them. Most of them are the same ones that I have a problem with. And that's including Creepshow. Oh, I love that show, Sister Wives. Are you kidding me? I buy the seasons so I can watch them on my Xbox. I've been watching Sister Wives since it started. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't know. That's why I was never really interested in doing all the Katie Joy. One, I didn't want to become a Katie Joy hate channel. That's why I said, I swear, I will not become a BX Beast Boy hate channel. I think... Being a hate channel over one person is detrimental if you want to make a career out of YouTube. Okay? I don't want to be known just for one thing. You know? Two, I don't... I'm going to be honest. I don't give a shit what Katie Joy had for breakfast. Or I don't give a shit what the fuck her dog did. Like somebody literally has a title of Katie Joy let her dog do this. I have no idea what it was about, nor do I care. Yeah, no, I get it, Jess. I get it. I mean, there's just, there's, uh, here's the thing. I think it's one big vicious cycle. I think there's bad things coming from bad directions in every direction possible to the point where it's all muddy. And some of the people that have gone after KJ are just as bad, if not worse, than her how can people get on katie joy for making all those videos about toddy when you literally have a creator right now with like 80 videos on katie joy but yet they're going to talk about how many videos she had on toddy and you got double that amount on her yeah that was a good show nessa it really was Xylee being a sister wise stand is the most controversial thing said in the stream and a lot of controversial things have been said today. Well, the most controversial thing was your ass saying you stand Azalea Banks. The fuck was that about? I should do a whole live on why you should not stand Azalea Banks. You know, I just may do that. I think I'm going to do a live on why you cannot Stan Azalea Banks. And I'm going to pull up the old footage of when she cried that they were making fun of her teeth. And then right after that, I'm going to show her fat shaming Meg the Stallion. Like, um, excuse me, ma'am, what? Oh, Uni, don't. I've got videos on Uni Rock. Uni Rock is a grifter. Uni Rock is a piece of poo. Seriously, I don't get me started on Uni Rock because we'll be here another hour. We will be here another hour. And fun fact, I don't think Creep Show was doxxed. I don't think that link had a dox on Creep Show. And I actually believe Katie Joy when she says that Uni Rock said he was going to do a video on Creep Show. And the reason why I believe that, and I'm just going to say this about Uni Rock. The reason why I believe that, because it's when Uni Rock went on the RGRC after our show with Creep Show on there because he was getting ready to start a stream showing how Creep Show was wrong. And he got busted and they pulled his ass into RGRC and he basically bowed down to every single one of them because they were bigger creators than him so i actually believe katie joy that uni rock was going to do a video on creep show because he thought his ass was going to be all tough and do a live on creep show until he got called out on it and then that's when he flipped that's when he, it was right after that is when he flipped I'm not stupid. 
I know exactly what happened. Is she the one who had her butt implants removed because they were caught? Um, I think that was, um, Keisha. Was that Keisha Cole? It wasn't Keisha Cole, was it? Was it Keisha Cole? No. Who was it that had her butt plants removed because they were causing health problems? Okay, you're talking. Okay, Nessa, I got you beat. All right. How well do you know the Jersey Shore? Because I can tell you right now, just cut on an episode. Just whatever episode you want, and I guarantee you, I know the words to that episode. I have watched the Jersey Shore so much. And do you want to know my second my second favorite reality show is and y'all are oh my god y'all are going to cancel me for this i don't know if i should tell you oh y'all are going to cancel me for this y'all want to know my favorite one k michelle there you go skip that's exactly who it was y'all want to know who my favorite reality tv show is now y'all have to promise me you're not going to cancel me when i tell y'all this no canceling xylee my favorite my second favorite my first favorite was jersey shore my, no my second favorite is uh, sister wives this is my third favorite my third favorite reality show is Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Don't you listen. They're rich and their lives are fucked up. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good to be a common man or a common woman, excuse me. It makes me feel good to be a common woman. Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I've never seen bad girls. <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, I can't help it. I love Chloe. <laughs> I can't help it. Listen, I've been watching Keeping Up with the Guy. Listen, I understand they're problematic, and I understand why people cuss their ass out. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I sit on my couch eating my whatever fattening ass food that I'm eating watching this shit with my Diet Coke, and I cuss them out too. But it's so messy. I love it. That's true, drama parody. I agree with you. Angelo, okay, clip it. I don't care because I'll take a screenshot and I will put everywhere where you said you stand Azalea, Azalea Banks. Go ahead, clip it. You love Azalea Banks. And matter of fact, you went so far as to say she's the best rapper currently right now in the female genre. genre. So I, you have no room to talk about anything. It's Fucking Azalea Banks. Azalea fucking Banks. <laughs> Skip's like, fuck that. Kim's pretty and I like looking at her. Amen, Skip. Called out for emoji blackfishing as... Wait, what? She's being called out for what? What are you talking about? Oh, I didn't know that. Is she really? Is she really? I didn't know that. Wait. 
That shit she did with Grimes was too much. Okay, I don't know about that one either. Look, I just watched the show. Listen, I'm down to the point on Hulu. I have watched everything. I'm down to watching Vanderpump Rules. Swear to God. And I'm telling you, I am into this shit. Because right now, we're talking about how Kristen slept with Jax. And I'm really enthralled with this. Because I really want to know, did Kristen sleep with Jax in January? There's no way. She's still dating Tom. So how... Like, why? Why would she sleep with her boyfriend's best friend? When that best friend was dating her best friend. And they all work at the restaurant together. It's it's amazing stuff. Okay, that was a funny ass line. I remember when Kim was crying about her diamond getting lost in the ocean. According, like people, Kim, people are dying. No, no, please don't tell me because I'm gonna go fall asleep and watching it. But I need to know. Well, did Kristen sleep with Jax? Girl, if you tell me Kristen slept with Jax, I swear to God, I might throw my phone at my TV. I need a cigarette. Now that we're up here just talking bullshit right now. Did Kristen sleep with Jax? Maria, did Kristen sleep with Jax? You can tell me. It's okay. I don't mind spoilers. Um, Kim did get the diamond, actually. Her asshole ex-husband, he was a dickhead. I didn't like him. Um, he actually dived down and got it for her. I need to do a deep dive on Azalea. Oh, Drama Perry, you might not want to do that. All right, Zale says, so can our white friends share gifts from black films and TV? I don't. That's a good question. No, Maria. Okay, Maria. All right, listen. We're getting ready to be really good friends now. We're going to get close and intimate, okay? Just me and you in this chat, Maria. It's just me and you, okay? It's just me and you. Did Jax sleep with Kristen? Oh, Maria, did Jax sleep with Chris? I have to know. Oh, Chris Humphreys was a... Pss. Chris Humphreys was an... He was an ass. Like, I literally wanted to punch him in his face. In Minecraft. In Minecraft. Oh, the whole thing is staged... Yeah, no, I agree with you, madam. Whole thing staged. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Maria. Okay, hold on. I got to use this ASM right, real quick. <clears throat> Maria. Maria. Did Kristen sleep with Jax? Listen, Maria. Just type yes or no. Did Kristen and Jax sleep together? I am not going to let you leave this chat until you tell me. Did Kristen and Jax sleep together? Ma'am, I am not letting you leave and I am not shutting this camera off until you tell me did Kristen and Jax sleep together? Just type yes or no. Thank you, Karma. Thank you. I knew it. She was such a hoe. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, I can't wait to watch that because I'm going to cuss that her ass out. I'm going to cuss her ass out. What are you doing sleeping with Jax? 
And you got Tom in the house. And I understand Tom's a little weird. And he spends like 20 minutes on his hair and shit like that. I get that. I get that. Okay. You want a little bit of adventure. But Jax, of all people, Jax, she a hoe. Zales, stop. I am not going to read that. Because I know what you mean by that. I knew it. I knew it. I had a feeling. Because she was ducking and diving that shit. She was ducking and diving that shit. Okay. All right. Because I think I'm getting ready to come up to the episode where we find out. When I found out he really got that girl pregnant in Vegas, I was like... You ho. And then Tom cheated on. Well, see, then again, Tom cheated on Kristen from a. They need to stop going to Vegas. The men can't keep their pants on in Vegas, apparently. What's up, Amy? <gasps> Tom was in the next room? No. Are you serious? Tom was in the next room? Shut up. Yes, it's called Vanderpump Rules. It's basically a bunch of people, beautiful white people, work in a restaurant. And Vanderpump, she owns the restaurant. Well, she's actually pretty badass. And she actually knows everything that's going on. I actually like her. Because she, she's like, you're an asshole. But these people don't keep their pants on. Uh, they're all sleeping around all willy dilly. I can't believe Tom was in the next room and Jax is his best friend. How you gonna sleep with your best friend? How you gonna sleep with your best friend's girl? And then how are you going to sleep with your boyfriend's best friend? Excuse me. No. Mm -mm. I believe being a hussy, but don't be a hussy with people that, you know, are taken. Well, I think they're all cheaters too. They ain't got nothing else to do but to have sex with each other. It's what it seems like. See, now I gotta go watch that episode. Oh, Stassi! I would love to meet Stassi in Minecraft. That's all I'm gonna say about Stassi. I would love to meet her in Minecraft. That's all I'm gonna say about her. I've seen some of that show, but I may have... Girl, I'm on season two right now. I watched all of season one yesterday, hence the reason why I'm probably going to bed after the stream because I got no sleep. I was up till 3 a.m. Well, I know that, but they're not respectable hussies. Respectable hussies won't touch another woman's man or another woman's woman. A respectable hussy don't do that, okay? Apparently, these aren't respectable hussies. I only affiliate with respectable hussies, Okay? Just saying. Ooh, that's who I. I only I only hang around respectable hussies. I watched the entire first reality footage, 1971, called "An American Family." It featured the Louds. That's her last name. Pretty cool. 1971. That made a movie about it and starring Jade. Oh. Oh yeah, me too. I was never with. Yeah, I was never with somebody taken. No. Now, I did have an ex-boyfriend come to find out he cheated on me. Okay, so I'm going to tell y'all this short story, and then I'm going to let y'all go. All right? So I had an ex-boyfriend. Well, obviously. And this isn't the bad one, you know. Well, he's bad. All right? And I can't help it, but he looked like Method Man. All right, so y'all can just imagine. I'm just saying. And he was a rapper. So we had been dating. 
I think right at three years at this point. And he wanted me to listen to his newest track. So I'm listening to it. And he says something about I'm doing this for my two sons and my daughter. Now I'm in the middle of a busy street. I ripped the CD out of the radio. I stopped the car and I looked at him with the CD. I'm like, how many kids you got? I knew about the daughter. He goes, I got two sons and a daughter. I'm like, really? How old are those two sons? Found out he cheated on me with two other women. Both of them got pregnant. Needless to say, he got out of that car expeditiously and the CD got thrown out the window and got ran over. Just saying. I do not play those games. Oh, no. That relationship ended right then and right there. In the middle of the street. Oh, Lord, making hussy merch. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I found out he cheated on me because he was dumb enough to put it on a track that he wanted me to hear. I knew about his daughter. I didn't know about his two sons. That just so happened mathematically. And I even, listen, I even gave him benefit of the doubt. I did eight months instead of nine. And he still would have cheated on me with both baby mamas. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, so that relationship ended that night. With me telling him, get the hell out the car, and I threw the CD. I hope that wasn't his only uh, copy. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I did. I stopped the car. I was like, wait a minute. How many kids you got? Wait a minute. I know about the daughter. Where did two sons come from? How many kids you got? Yeah, girl. Uh, that's what I get. I should have known better than be with him anyway. But he looked like Method Man, okay? Listen. He looked like Method Man. Y'all know I love me some Method Man, okay? I couldn't help it. The man looked like Method Man. And he was an old flint. You know how like when you're in junior high and you date somebody, but you're really not dating somebody. We had a little fling in junior high school and I ran into him years later. He looked like Method Man. I'm sorry. That's the only excuse I got. He... But I got a good one now. That's all that matters. <laughs> yes, madam. Yes. Yes. Y'all know who I am about Method Man. Mm. I'm going to tell you right now. If I ever get a chance to meet him, I'm breaking some laws. You just know I'm going to jail. If I ever meet him in real life. I'm going to jail. And I and, I, and, and the sad thing is, it won't be because I want to go to jail. It's just because, like, some crazy out-of-space force is going to take over my body. And I'm going to jail if I ever meet him. Yeah, I know. I love that Hulu show. I love me some Method Man. Mm-mm. Can't nobody come between me and my method man. And you know what? He is one of those that the older he has gotten, the better looking he's got. Have y'all seen Method Man lately? Working out and stuff? My God. I could sit there and watch that man lift weights all day. I would just sit and... I I would like... uh, Okay. Okay. Do them... Yeah. Let me see them arms work. Oh... My God. M E T H O D, man. I would just sit there, watch him work out all day. 
He's 40. I'm 45. See? He likes Puerto Rican women. His wife's Puerto Rican. I don't know if they got divorced. I think I think he's still with her. Because he got mad at Wendy Williams even mentioning her. Yep. He's asleep in the bed. Plus, he knows how I feel about Method Man. I ain't never meeting Method Man. I ain't never going to be that famous. Plus, I know who he likes, okay? So. And I can tell you this. The bitch don't look like me either. All right? I'm just saying. So, it's okay. The chef is my guy, too. Literally a fucking, lyrically a fucking monster. Love me some Method Man. I'm telling you, I would go to jail. If I ever met him, like if I ran into him in the street, I would go to jail. And and it's not like I would mean to go to jail. It's just some centrifugal voice uh, force would take over my body. And I'd be like, oh my God, it's Method Man. I have to touch. He is. I got taste. Anyway, this live stream got derailed. I'm blaming Angelo for this live. He's totally getting blamed for this shit. All right. Anything else that we need to talk about? Because if not, I'm going to bed. Well, no. First, I got to watch the episode where Kristen fesses up to sleeping with Jax. And then I'm going to bed. Because I think I'm at that episode. Kind of remind me of Ice Cream. King Quinn, don't you ever. Okay, listen. I like you, Quinn. Don't ever, ever. He in, he in no way looks like Ice Cube. In no way, shape, or form does he look like sound like or raps like ice cube they are nowhere near the same method man like ice cube is like here method man is way past the screen nowhere near uh yep zales that is true Oh, Madam Scuttlebutt. Okay, I'm leaving, y'all. Madam starting. Madam starting. I gotta go. All right, love y'all. Y'all have a good night. Peace out.